Да, но оф таковой не слышно, да. Закрой дверь тогда, хорошо? Да, спасибо. Э, не, вот тут, вот тут, вот тут, тумблерочек. О, Фу, есть. Вот, еще раз. Все, есть. Еще раз, еще раз, теперь. Поправить кадр уже нету никого. Уже нету. Так есть, есть, да? Есть как есть. Мы, говорит, готовы начинать, в принципе. Может, телек поправим? Good afternoon, everybody. It's the first game of the final Moscow Grand Prix will be played today, and I hope you enjoyed the video from the tiebreak day, day before yesterday, dramatic tiebreak, which was won by Jan Nepomnici, and he joins his compatriot Alexander Grishuk to play the final. So today, first game, Grishuk is white, and we do anticipate a lot of fight today. Well, Grishuk was pressing in all of the previous games with white pieces. So Today should be no exception. Uh, I believe players are ready in the playing hall and we are ready in the studio. So Daniel Yufa and myself, we will be commentating on this final. Don't see Krishuk so far, I have to say. As yeah. well in previous rounds, because yeah. probably he was the latest player who came to the playing hall. Yeah, he, he usually arrives quite, quite late. Yeah, so here he is, Alexander Krishuk. Uh, white pieces against Jan Nepomnici. We did our homework quite a bit to check the statistics between those two. So, well, a slight plus, if I'm not mistaken, is plus two out of 41, one game. 41 game, yeah, for Alexander Grishuk. But most of those games were played in Rapid and Blitz. And as far as our uh, investigation went, the last classical game they played already couple of years ago in yeah, Grand Prix, same series, but two years ago in Grand Prix Sharjah in United Arab Emirates. And we have to admit that most of defeats Yanni Pomish uh, suffered as uh, he was much younger than Grishuk. By the way, the difference between Jan and Grishuk is like seven years. So seven years, yeah. So Grishuk is seven years more experienced. Jan is seven years more energetic so yeah. to speak yeah so that's so the first game happened w in 2007 probably it was uh, a blitz tournament in moscow and most of uh, the games played between grishuk and nipomishi were played in blitz but uh, okay well uh, and uh, in fact that there were a lot of draws and uh, it's like uh, Grishuk wins one game, then Nipomishi wins another. That's why the score is quite tense, like 19 and a half uh, for Nipomishi and 21 and a half for Grishuk. And uh, today we should expect a real fight. Yeah, so 1 E4. Well, we were informed that 1 E4 will be played by Grishuk. We should normally expect the Sicilian, Knight of Sicilian. Yeah, but, but he returned the pawn on A2. It? So probably it means that because in the games, for example, when White Ashik played with White, and uh, as uh, if I remember correctly, uh, the Georgian woman world champion, uh, Nona 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 made ah, the right. D4. So she made uh, D4, and the pawn remained on D4. Yeah. So, so you mean it could be that something Krishik else? Krishik will change the move. No, not really. D4. A D4. Yeah. So probably just some Catalan or Queen Zinian, which. Probably Grishuk prepare for this exact oh Grand wait, Prix. But Jan is known to play the Grunfeld as well. And knight f6 and is knight f6, yes. So the question will be what in the Grunfeld? For some reason, I think it will be the Grunfeld, so c4, or g6. Or some anti, like f3. f3 is the move, of course. You can also try to play with, I mean, Fianchetto line, you can start with g3 here. Yeah, well, which Black probably will lead to no, just knight c3. Knight c3, the regular Grunfeld. I don't expect Jan to play anything Kings else Union, but yeah. d5. D5 and played. D5. 
So and and we spent like qu <laughs> quite a lot of time in the studio talking about well white's struggle to get any sort of advantage in various anti Grunfeld lines. So Krishuk says, "Oh, okay, I might as well just play, you know, play the Grunfeld, the the real thing, instead of going for F3 or trying the English opening with one C4." He just goes for. Uh, well, from the games I can recall, Alexander Grishuk played with white. There was something with queen a4 check. Uh, I mean, not here, but e4, knight takes, yeah. pawn takes. e4, knight takes, pawn takes, bishop g7, and I believe a couple of times he did play uh, the line with queen a4 check, which is nothing special, but a bit tricky. This line was very popular like a few years ago. I mean, it it might remain as uh, popular, but uh, I mean, maybe the peak of popularity came to 2017, 2018. Yeah, well, the thing is, it's really hard to say what is the main line. I mean, if if, if we are allowed to say what is the main uh, line against the Grunfeld nowadays, because uh, as I keep saying, nobody seemed to be interested in going for yeah. Grunfeld with white, right? Knight to f3, okay. Castles, and then you have once uh, I believe it is castles, right? Or, or C5 oh, first. C5. C5 first is yeah. Well, the thing is that on the very next move, White gets to choose between like bishop e3, bishop rook e b1. Yeah, bishop e2 as well, right? Yeah. So C5. That's very very common. And Grishuk, e well. He has much broader opening repertoire compared to Jan, right? So Grishuk, for instance, you are white against the, uh, against Grishuk. You go d4. E4. You don't re you don't really know. I mean, you don't really know what Grishuk himself plays against one d4. He can go for some sort of Nimtzo. He can go for the King's Indian, the Grun. But uh, the point I'm trying to make that Grunfeld is one of his repertoire openings. Yeah. So he's ready to play this with black and that means he might know what are the unpleasant positions for black this is very common thing and it is really flexible when you uh, switch between the Grunfeld and King's Indian because your opponent has to prepare as well as Sir d5 as well as Sir uh, castle ah sorry bishop, g7, bishop yeah. g7 yeah knight c6 putting an immediate pressure on d4 so bishop e3, I, I yeah, believe, is the move. Or ir is there the line with uh, uh, exchange sacrifice, or it happens not in this position? I mean, um, like playing d5. I'm I, not I, sure. I, I think not there. I think both sides have to be castled for that, right? And when white, you mean when white goes d5 here? Yeah. So yeah, we we can we can kind of think of it. Bishop to d2. Takes, takes, it actually looks decent for white, right? I mean, once again, it's our uh, unexpert yeah. <laughs> analysis in this, wi which might make laugh players who do play Grunfeld. Yeah. Takes on d4, yeah, I mean, I would be, I would be... This is something that only Grunfeld players know properly. But by the I way, I, sh I should say that I'm not an expert in Grunfeld. Would be interested in playing this position with white even though I suspect yeah. that the black yeah, I mean castles gives back the exchange I mean th yeah, that's probably what you have if to if do if or if even f6 just f6 securing the yeah, extra material so what I'm trying to say that I mean if both sides castle here after knight c6 for instance I mean castles I, I believe I in case of castles the problem is that black's gonna take on d4 yeah. but if he doesn't if he can't because there is a theoretical position with both sides castling Castle, castle instead of CD4, yes, and then D5, knight E5, yeah, but D5 immediately, D5 yeah. played. Ah, it could be the transposition because we were not. Yeah, Jan takes. That's interesting because once again after D5 there is knight E5. I'm I'm pretty sure this you position. You mean, you uh, knight E5 takes takes queen D2. Yeah, I mean yeah. Th that's that's a theoretical line, and then like this queen E5, weird. Bishop yeah. Or, or if he castles f4 and bishop goes to c7 or g7. Yes, I mean, yes. there, there were discussions in this line, I believe, since Gary Kasparov's it, it, times. It always seems a bit strange for me because, like, white have a center. Uh, black's pieces look a bit awkward, but uh, still, I mean, computer evaluates this position as slightly, slightly better for white. So, and so all that that we said, we do, we are not sure if it is relevant. It did happen, in fact, and Black, Castle as I thought, yeah, he, he castles quickly, so he gives White a chance to win the exchange back, 
castles, but I believe it comes at the cost, because if bishop h6, uh, the problem is that check on a5 is played first, That's why check on a5 it. played first, and then if you go king f1, you do win the exchange back, but after f6, bishop takes, king takes, black should have no problem, because yeah. the king is still on f1. Yeah. Right. So, Krishuk simply castles short after... Black castle, yeah, white castle short as well. So I think we have to recall it here, but maybe later, after uh, f6 instead of castle, because uh, personally I don't remember the exact line. I probably s have saw this position, I've seen it many times, but I don't know what to do there with white as well as with black. Yeah, okay, so now, white kind of starts threatening for real to go bishop h6 and yeah. to win the exchange. No more checks. So, for instance, like if black goes bishop d7, which is semi-developing move, right? Bishop h6, f6, bishop takes, I don't know, queen takes perhaps? Yeah, yeah right? And then something... I think even d6 is considerable. This is... These positions are known to be somewhat better for white, right? That's like bishop okay, C4, well, they have a e5 time can F4. be... f4, e5, yeah, so something of like that. Bishop yeah. b3, bishop, bishop, bishop c4, c4 yeah. bishop b 3s Right, Very so now the critical question is yeah, how to react with... Uh, well, and Jan so actually and play played the queen move, b6. played pretty quickly. He played queen b6 instead of bishop d7, yeah. Queen's exchange is not an option just yet, I suppose. But, but yeah. what else? Uh, what I else? mean, if, if, if you play queen e5, I think black can simply play queen d6. Queen I mean, to d6. Prosecuting the queen. And then, yeah, and if <laughs> queen comes back... <laughs> Which probably may lead to some <laughs> move repetition. So, some funny repetition, yeah. I mean, I, I'm not sure if black necessarily wants to repeat right here, because yeah, he might try something. Of course, there is nothing wrong with going queen b6, but... He might. Yeah, and once again, I do not believe that Krishuk's idea is that simple. Yeah, obviously. So, well, there should be something... I think if he wants to check, and I think it's maybe... Uh, this uh, check uh, should be much more complicated than just simple playing queen e5, queen d4 back. So I think that we yeah. should expect something much compl much more complicated than the line that we shown mm -hmm. just. Yeah, well, could be that you do go queen e5, for instance. I mean, uh, queen d6, and then suddenly take. Yeah, it's like takes takes doesn't really work. Yeah, I, I don't see how it uh, how it's gonna work there. Me too. Yes. Yeah, coming back to B2 once or again. Or maybe it's not so simple as it seems to be in the so first okay, glance. takes, takes. Like maybe bishop F4 or bishop B4, because bishop B5 probably has no sense because of F6. F6, yeah. So bishop F4, rook D8, rook C1, and then if the bishop moves, we go to C7, right? Yeah. I mean, first of all, bishop D7 is... Connected with bishop, I mean, y you have to have to think of bishop takes d6. Yeah, obviously. So it might be an awkward position for black, despite being an exchange up. And uh, now I, I, I can't see the a, a clean, a very clear plan for black how to develop their pieces. I mean, maybe putting the king in the center is not so... So it's like to go king of eight. Yeah. But at this very moment, you know, like... So I, I, I was thinking about bishop g5, but the problem that after rook, rook e the pawn is hanging. e4 is hanging, yeah. yeah. Otherwise I would play bishop f6, trying to dominate all the board. Yeah, it's like, for instance, bishop to f6 and uh, black for some mysterious reason doesn't take. And then white goes f3 yeah. and he controls quite a lot of squares on, on the king side. Okay, yeah, well, so but the other plan is just to play uh, bishop, bishop d7 and rook c8. So well, so apparently this exchange sacrifice, uh, well, not the exchange sacrifice, but our attempt to swap the queens and to play it, uh, to play that position is not what Khrushchev wants. Yeah, so yeah and I have to mention that the check, kind of check, uh, check up uh, Daniel was referring to, I, well, it's a kind of in modern te uh, terminology for chess, uh, with opening preparation being very deep, and, and both players usually know a lot of the lines in their opening. So you pick up one particular line that your opponent perhaps had analyzed but has forgotten or yeah. something. You look at it in detail, you come to the game and you play it. 
So if he remembers, so he is able to recall, restore in his brain yeah. all the moves that are suggested Prob by. Probably should be a draw. Yeah, then he probably will equalize and the game finishes in a draw. But if he he is not able to do so, then you you are running a. Uh, but well, then you have a chance to get an advantage. Right. So Alexander is thinking, but do not be fooled. Uh, I believe he knows what he is doing. Or maybe he has a couple of couple of ways yeah. here, and then yeah, he's kind of uh, trying, trying to, to decide to decide which one. So what else instead of queen e5? What else? I mean, I'm wondering how good or bad is the position if you just move the queen to more or less any square. I thought, for instance, uh, why I was going queen e5, queen e5, queen d6, and then to go back to b2, for instance. Okay, well. I mean, I'm not sure if it's... You might as well ask me one more time, like, going queen b6 and, and what do you do? Yeah, because other than that, some bishop b4s might be... Bit annoying. Yeah? Maybe, maybe queen c3 instead of queen b3. Just ah, it's queen not c3, so low the, uh, but then there should repetition. be seven. Yeah. Ah, well, yeah, okay, but, but well, now I'm, so I'm I'm ready ready to at least to take the exchange, right? Bishop h6, f6 takes on f8. I'm not sure if it's if it's anything for white, because uh, we were referring to this one as somewhat better for white, but compared to our line, uh, black wins. A couple of very important tempi. So f6, bishop takes, rook takes, I suppose. Yeah, then rook c8 comes with a tempo. For instance, in case of f4, like rook c8, then queen c5 with check. The yeah. feeling is the feeling is like black, black should be in time, yeah? Yeah, in case of queen d4, I believe he can simply swap the queens and the. Because end usually endgames in Grunfeld, so you would barely see some really better end games for white in this opening because black are solid and they have a slight advantage because they have like two pawns on the queen side against one but in the center it's not so easy to create a post pawn so that's why this end game should yeah, be considered should be as i mean like uh in human playing mm, in favor of black right okay so i'm a bit puzzled with Grishuk thinking over in the i mean over his move in this position. So normally, if you went to sacrifice the exchange, you should be properly should be prepared. prepared. Yeah, you should be prepared. Yes, yeah, like queen a1 maybe is not such a terrible move. Like preparing to play rook b1 somewhere, bishop h6 is still the case. Okay, well, if I just try to s yeah, save to the be exchange. Yeah, to be greedy a bit. Rook b1, I suppose. Then to try to chase this queen. It's not clear where, where it is going. Queen d6. Like queen d6 allows have. some extra tempos yep, because we can play d, bishop, bishop before. before. Like queen d7 is a bit awkward. Yeah. Yeah. So forcing like black to play queen c7 or queen, queen d8. or queen d8. Probably. Yeah. In case of queen d8, white might continue with bishop c4, for instance. Once again, I mean, d6 becomes the threat, and putting the king on long diagonal already, you know, uh, like king h8 or king g7, white goes e5, for instance. Yeah, Th this, looks this looks very nice for white. The compensation fact. is exceptional in this position. This, in fact, looks very, very nice for white. Yeah, I do believe that Black shouldn't be that greedy. The feeling is that he has to uh, has to give the exchange back in a in a proper moment. Okay, well, like queen in a case one. of queen a one, and then once again, let's try to play bishop d seven, for instance. So the only drawback of this development is just, I mean, the b seven. So once again, maybe rook, rook b one. Yeah. yeah. So rook then queen c seven probably. Queen c seven. Yeah, to keep the b seven dude protected. Yeah, inclusion of rook b1 and then rook c1 perhaps is better for... It's like white is getting the rook on the open file yep. immediately, right? So, no, but strangely, once again, the line looks so principled and so forced at the same time so that we are not experts here on this particular line, but I believe those players who are playing in the final, they should be. Or, and very likely they are. And then once again, a bit puzzling is the fact why Grushuk decided to stop right here. 
what could have been the al the alternative to queen b6? I'm, I'm asking myself because it's definitely not the first choice Grishuk was expecting. Yeah. Even though move looks maybe there is some sense in playing queen e4 to protect the g7 oh, square to, to prevent bishop d7. Yeah. Queen a4 and but uh, the idea of this move. I mean yeah, it's like bishop a5 in some. You know, in some positions, like yeah, he might try to say, yeah, you are not developing your bishop from c8 for a for <laughs> a long while. But now this move seems to me more or less logical because we are all also playing against yeah, the rook d8, d8 bishop a5. Yeah, bishop that's a5. that's an important important thing to mention. Yeah, queen a4 might be. A decent idea because at least black cannot accomplish the development immediately, so he can't go bishop d7. Okay, well, if I'll try to be some kind of aggressive, queen b2. Yeah, it's good. Like rook, d1. rook d1, even rook d1. Once again, bishop d7 is not possible. Rook d8 is possible here, though. Yep. Rook d8 with the idea to play bishop d7. Yeah, the queen b2 is actually quite an qu quite a nasty move because it slows white down quite a bit, right? Because white would like to move the bishops, I mean the bishop from d2 somewhere, like for instance. And also queen b2 secures this long diagonal, which can be yeah. quite dangerous because of some weaknesses of black squares on the king's side. So once again, a bit of a surprise from well this uh, moment of hesitation from Alexander. We've looked at queen a1, queen e5, queen a4, all of those moves have ah. some point. I'm trying to find the continuation of the queen a4 idea. Ah, so queen a4, yeah, indeed, I'm, I really like queen b2 for black in this case. Yes, and uh, perhaps we have to go rook d1, yes. And then after rook d8, not clear what what move it has to be for white. So probably we should try to chase the black, black queen, but it's not so clear not how. Not easy to do, yeah. And bishop d7 comes on the very next yeah. move, and then white queen won't have, won't have good squares. Maybe it's time, time to fight back for the d4 square again. Yeah, but, but how Not to do it? I mean, like queen c4, bishop d4, d7, bishop d7, and put the bishop on c3. Yes, but again, an annoying queen c2. <laughs> some moves like queen c2, yeah. Yeah, that's like strange because this queen. And, and like again, like <laughs> I'm trying to. Yeah, there, there could be a okay, repetition, it, it, but it as well after it, rook d2. It gives some. Yeah, this, or after rook d2, he can go b4? queen a4. Oh, queen a4. Queen yeah, a4. Right. Yeah. That's, that's and in this better. case. Black can be better. Yeah, because white somehow loses the, the coordination, right? So it like has to play a few unnecessary moves. Yeah, so yeah, perhaps the whole queen a4 thing, even though it looked it looked attractive, but perhaps it doesn't really work. Okay, so well I think Grishuk will help us to find an answer for the question that appeared during the analysis. Yeah, well... Uh, is it ever queen takes b6? No. Right, because... Yeah, well, like we are forced to play bishop c4 there, I Bishop think. c4, that's... Yeah, like because, once again, I thought, like, from the structure perspective, if white is in time... Uh, okay, okay, like, if white can make two moves in a row, a3 and bishop b4, then all of a sudden, I mean, it might be not bad for white at all. He's pressing on e7, Obviously. he kind of, uh, well, why uh, black's b pawns are, that's like one pawn, yeah, double pawns are of no value whatsoever in this position. But yeah, but white uh, is not in time tactically, because bishop c4 you have to play first. Yeah, because uh, pe the peculiar a3, yeah, a3 just sh sh rook sh takes. Sh shouldn't work because of... Maybe just some move with a tempo. Rook a2 attacking the bishop. In case of bishop c4, rook a4 attacking the bishop. Yeah. yeah. So this shouldn't normally work. And yeah, I mean, if you take b6, go bishop c4, black should be able to develop in time, right? Rook a4. Yeah, I once think they again. have just something for rook a4, I mean, rook c1, and then b5. say b5. 
and you have to give one of those pawns, like e4 or a2, yeah. which is in black's favor, at least it seems so. Right, so queen b6 is not really an option. I think queen e5, queen d6, queen... Well, um... Moving the queen here, right? Back to b2, I was thinking, but then... How do we react on queen b6 once again? If black wants queen b6, if, if black insists on well, and exchanging... And now and queen a3, perhaps. No, queen c3 immediately. Queen to c3. Okay. So it's like, yeah. This one we were talking about, yeah? Queen b6, queen c3. Yeah, and the conclusion was that perhaps it's no longer all that bad for black to go bishop d7. But yeah, we'll so bishop we'll d7 is bishop played D7 immediately. played immediately, so Jan decides not to try to hold on to an, an extra exchange, but give white a chance to win it back, but by that time to develop his pieces to establish some sort of coordination. So and, and this position forces white to do something immediately, otherwise if just black managed to put yeah, their pieces on right position... Exchange for nothing, after rook fc8 with the tempo, yeah, black will be so I think just perfectly happy. Bishop h6 is Bishop h6 is an only move. practically forced. Yeah, pra yeah. yeah, I mean he can think of bishop e3 first, perhaps. Don't know what for, to be honest. I mean, just, just to play an intermediate move. In which case I'm slightly worried about queen f6, not seriously worried, but slightly worried about queen f6, so that I'm not ge getting back my exchange. This okay, well, but I think that your queen may be in e5. Ah, th so the queen will be in s a bit of a danger. Queen h4, though. Yeah, queen h4. Yeah, so now you have some a4 square. Yeah, it's and like maybe I'll try to play for some position. So I don't really consider it as, as a continuation that Grishuk will choose, but... Yeah, f4 okay, well and just to try to play in a position fashion. Posi yeah. Yeah. Once again, in for, for this setup, white would really prefer to build the battery on the long on the yeah. long diagonal, but, you know, upside down. Like, now we could play bishop d4, but what we really want is queen in front yeah. of the bishop, so like that bishop e6 c1 would threaten mate. Yeah. Back. But this probably... Probably white won't be in time yet to, to play like bishop c1, bishop b2. So once again, that's kind of a very complicated position in in this case. And I think that in this position, white may have some sufficient compensation, but it's quite difficult to say. I mean, it's, it's remains unclear, and I wouldn't insist on that white is probably playing for an advantage. Just positional compensation, and we'll see what happens next. If black makes some mistake, okay, well then I'll try to play for something more. Right, but of course that, that's kind of an artificial try, bishop e3. Yeah. First thing to, to look at is well to go bishop h6 and to get the exchange back. Bishop h6, f6, takes, takes. Now the question <laughs> is, well, what kind of a position is that one? If white plays e5, what does black do? Take I goes yeah, queen so d6. Queen d6 oh. or queen f6. Yeah, so he has to establish control over dark squares. And, and yeah, and strangely... I, yeah, first, first of all, black may include the rook ah, c8. Rook c8 yeah. with the tempo, so queen goes to g3, whatever. Yeah, g3, for instance. And maybe now I'm not forced to take, I can play rook c2 and just... Well, I personally, mean, I don't like this kind of position. I was a bit worried about e6, but... I'm not sure, once again, I mean, how does that unfold? Because moving the bishop, allowing white to have such pawns, mm, we can say it's dangerous, yeah. right? And tactically, bishop takes e6 doesn't seem to work, because white has bishop d3. Rook takes e2, it's e d7... Bit, yeah, it's a bit dangerous, because I'm forced to play yeah. queen d8. Yeah, you have to... Oh no, wait, uh, I could give a check first and then it's probably just lost for black, yeah? Ah, you're right. Yeah, queen d8 check. Uh, queen b8 check, Yeah, part. and it's winning. Queen b8 check, yeah, so, so it's either you letting me take with the pawn and then the pawn promotes, or I don't know what. Yeah, you're right, just, just winning. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So just say so, yeah, but I th I think Black was perfectly fine taking on e5 to be honest. Like Rook c8 was fine, Queen g3, and then and then you just take uh, Queen d6. And those various end games that might occur here should be absolutely fine for Black. Black, in fact, might be even slightly better because yeah, the fact that Daniel mentioned that two pawns versus one on the queen side. It's, easy, it's faster and easier to promote than like yep. four against three. To create the fast pawn, two. yeah. So those B and A pawn in case white, especially if white takes on D6, then B5, A5, those pawns running very, and very quickly. Usually, it illustrates nicely in some rook end games where when, for example, one side has four and three on the one side, and on the other like two on three, and uh, the side who has three pawns against two has like the stronger factor in comparison. Yeah, that's, that's like pawns are moving faster, yeah. I remember this old jokes, uh, joke we used to make as kids when, <laughs> you know, you lose much better position in the end game where you had two or three, sometimes three connected passports. Uh, not because the position was objectively bad, but y you were completely winning. You had three connect passports pawns and your opponent had only one, but somehow you lose and then, then they would you know, make fun of you, saying, okay, of course one pawn is fast, it's like one, 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 <laughs> and, and it goes, and it, well, you have to go one, two, three, one, yeah, two, yeah, three yeah, with yeah. your three pawns. So, <laughs> so obviously one pawn is better than three. <laughs> uh, well. So, bishop d7, not, no move from Grishuk, and no Grishuk himself <laughs> at the board. So. As well as Jan. Yeah, that's very typical with uh, Jan Nepomnici, I believe, so he is to stand up from the board any time he makes the move. By the way, I'm thinking I in this Grand Prix, was there a player who would be seated at the board, uh, at the board, like for all, for, you know, for all the game? Because I believe from the top players, Dingley Ren is doing this. He yeah. practically never stands up from the he's game. Yeah, yeah. So he's. I think it's just most. It's it's very common practice. Uh, practice for Chinese players because they're trying to concentrate I mean not very, watching very the properly, other games yeah. yeah so well really determined to play the game there object. maybe just a, or probably it may be just a rule of some Chinese chess school I mean like you're focused on your game don't pay attention to another just not to yeah it's it's two different I don't know two different approaches to different schools that you either saying okay I don't care what goes on in the tournament hall that's my game that's my world for another yeah. like uh, for, for next three four hours so it, it's all shuts down to the the board in front of me so by the way like how, how do you usually play because uh -huh. i'm trying to concentrate only on my game that's why for example if my friends playing in the same tournament the same tournament asking me if i watch their position i said no because like 90 uh, percent of time spending uh, just on the board and uh, rarely may, may go for some water or coffee or yeah for me it always was uh, depending on the position I'm playing mm -hmm. honestly because yeah well and and usually I believe that that's a very common situation so if your position is good then you are uh, well not necessarily good but, but you're certain of what you're doing then yeah. you might st uh, stand up and then we are coming into a second approach the so first ones to concentrate this uh, the second one is to kind of you know mix the moments of concentration with slight relaxation maybe shift to something else just to just to stay fresh at you know solving the position uh, the questions presented to you well so you come to the board and then it's kind of a fresh situation right and you're trying to well well so now i have to find the best move in this position and then a couple of moves later in this position so i, I used to walk quite a lot during the games, which is not necessarily a good thing to do. Yeah, but r r uh, regarding to the world champions, as I remember, uh, I think Capablanca or Lechen were the first two players who didn't spend that much time seated at the yeah, board. Yeah, yeah, sitting in yeah. the board. Like I believe Botwinnik was yeah. teaching us all that you have to sit, sit like, yeah. and you have to use time of your opponent. And also he. I know that probably he prohibited his uh, students to play blitz uh, before some age, like yeah, twelve. Yeah, or there 13. was there was a lot of games which, uh, oh sorry, a, lo a lot of rules from between Nick Pierre, but between Nick School, or let's say rules that he made for himself that now lo now sound like 
you know, non-realistic, some archaic and sometimes funny. Like because chess is changing and... Yeah, everything's changing. The, the life uh, sped up so much that, okay, so one of the advance, uh, advices from Michael Batwinik was that you should not play more than 60 games a year, 60 tournament games. And then if you check top 10, those guys, they, they, they always play. It's yeah. like throughout the year, the calendar is such that they are playing, I don't know, 150 games but possibly. I think this rule... Um, doesn't include a Rapid and Blitz game. Yeah, well, beca because he was because completely... He against yeah, it. was against it. Yeah, it's like, this is not chess, period, right? Well, but now, I believe we, we enjoy... Yeah, it's difficult to imagine the chess world b without Blitz and Rapid because I think nowadays Blitz and Rapid makes chess more popular yeah, and entertaining, inter that entertaining for spectators uh, yeah, as I well as for players. It gets better and better. It, it gets more and more popular, the, those shorter time controls. Uh, so, empty board, Nothing only one board. game. Yeah, no, not, not the, <laughs> not, uh, well, not the board is empty, but the table. So both chairs are empty. It looks like the game was already played, but players forgot to set it up for the next one. Right, so one more time, uh, we are still in the same position where, so Chris expand, oh, well, by the way, let's, let's refresh, let's see, let's check what the time spent. So Queen C3, before Queen C3 there was nothing to talk about, right, so Queen B6, all that was more or less blitzed out. Then, uh, Chris spent 15 minutes on his Queen C3 which was no surprise for Nepomnishi because he played it very uh, his move bishop d7 very very quickly and now another pause from Grishuk I don't know how much time he has spent already and to be honest I'm not even sure if all of that time he spent on the position because he didn't show up he's in the we suspect he's in the players rest area where they do have the monitors so he can see the the position he's perhaps he can get a tea, coffee, whatever. Right, so he's thinking there, while I still believe that this should be known if he entered this line. And I was just told that we need to make a short, very short technical break, couple of minutes, we'll be back, and I hope that by that time Krishuk will make his move so we'll get some new topics, new positions to talk about. So stay tuned, guys. It, it won't be long, really. It's not our usual break for the comment. It's, it's just a technical one, so a couple of minutes needed. So, welcome back everyone. I hope we fixed what needed to be fixed. And first game is in progress. Alexander Grishuk uh, is still thinking in the opening against Jan Nepomnishi. Somewhat unexpected development of this game because it was 
I believe it was Greshuk to surprise his opponent, or he was hoping to surprise his opponent, but Jan reacted instantly, and, well, we commentators, we cannot really see uh, the way for White to get any any advantage, not, not a substantial advantage, but any advantage. And moreover, Grishuk is still not back <laughs> at the board. So our conclusion was that White has to go, so no, not bishop e3, but White has to go bishop h6 immediately to win the exchange back. f6 in this case, that's what we think bishop takes, rook takes. So that's a critical position. That's a critical position, because indeed White does have kind of center, more pawns in the center and everything, but it's not obvious how he's supposed to develop his initiative. And if he doesn't develop his initiative in a couple of moves, then black will, you know, take the open file, so rook c8 is a clear threat. And already black might start to look, you know, with some optimism. Maybe I should play queen a3, I position. mean, just to chain with the protection of e7 pawn. Oh yeah, queen a3 queen a is the a point good that you can't play queen d6 immediately because a7 is hanging. And so... Uh, Okay, well, I can't say that I'm forcing you to play king f7 because of many reasons. Yeah, well, actually, queen a3 kind of escaped my attention, so if I'm allowed to change the move, I might want to take with the king, strangely enough. Ah, but then you go e5, and it might be... Oh, no, no, e5, black takes, yeah? So I thought e5, black takes, queen takes, and there is no queen d6 for an obvious reason, queen h8, right? But you have yeah. queen f6, which... But should, well, I think that fine. the line doesn't end on queen of 6 because now I have queen c7. Ah, queen c7, so you might annoy me quite a bit more. So after e5, once again, changing the mind, rook c8 first. So if rook I c8 first, queen g3. Well, actually, queen e3 doesn't really change much, right? Because at some point I thought queen e3 and maybe it's awkward for black to take on e3 because the f-file is op yeah. gets open, but black doesn't really care. Black k takes on e5, yeah? I mean, did this yeah. might, might be something. I mean, but maybe queen, queen e3 we don't know, kind of forces to take on e3. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah. Black can take on e5. Yeah, I, I mean, yes, obviously. Black can e5 take on e5. Because if, if you take on e3, I have some idea connected with playing e6 there. Yeah. And then suddenly... I may e4, have something, yeah. so I may. Yeah, here it, it's once again get some fruits because of this f five pawn. Yeah. So this might be not all that pleasant, but after queen e three, black might as well just take on e five. So it's no different. Any case, white takes now queen f six. Yeah, so you just gain the tempo. Perfectly fine. Yeah. Well, like if I. Try to Probably a four is what you have to try, right? Because leaving leaving e5 square doesn't seem to be very appealing. Exchanging on f6 is for sure not very appealing. Yeah. So f4, and then I believe the ve very principal question would be if black can take on e5, right? Takes, takes, and I don't know what. Because king e8 is dangerous. A bit risky, yeah. I think e6, e6 and rook, and rook f7. to f7, yeah, that this is what you are, what you normally should be worried about. Rook f7 and then... Or maybe there is some idea to improve starting with rook f4. Rook f4 chasing the bishop, yeah, and if the bishop leaves, then bishop b5 check. Yeah. So and if b5 this is, this is so, dangerous, yeah. this is dangerous, clearly. So okay, well, yeah, maybe rook he f7 might, you know, He might take and go king g7, takes takes king g7 and say that this is fine because now e6 there is bishop e8 and once again I find it really difficult to to access this position because yes white has you know a kind of really far advanced pawns but at the same time they are unlikely like yeah they can be weaknesses yeah they are unlikely to create a dangerous passed pawn the, if you break with d6 then e7, e6 pawns should be easy to stop with the king so even such positions are very, Maybe very I sh unclear. I, I should be a bit more accurate and start with something like rook b1 or... Yeah, I think b1. b1. Yeah, b6. But I don't know how to continue. 
Yeah, that's the problem. It's like two open files in the like position. But potentially it can be better for Black, yep. I think. I mean, if he slowly lifts his position, rook to c5, and some g5 on the other wing, yeah. and then bishop e8 to g6. Yeah, after rook c5, e6 becomes a e6 threat. e6 becomes kind of annoying move. So two open files. In the position, c file is controlled by the black rook, and then f file, white had the rook on f file, but he couldn't use it. So, once again, this is far from reality. So, the, the actual position yeah. is bishop d7 and Krishuk still thinking. He's, well, just w went below one hour on his clock, so 56 minutes if I see it correctly. Nepo is on 1 hour 35, so essentially blitzed out all the moves. It's move 15, by the way, we are talking about. Move, move 15 was just made, bishop d7. So. Yeah, that's so weird that, I mean, the time control, once again, if we speak, we, we were speaking about Botvinnik and, and how many games you have to play and everything. That times, Botvinnik times, it was two and a half hours for 14 moves. Yeah. Now we have effectively 1 hour 50. Right, so it's 1 hour 30 plus this increment of 30 seconds per move, which uh, adds up to 1 hour 50. So the games became a bit faster. And still, sometimes players like, and also the opening theory developed quite a bit, right? So it's not a rare case where players just like blitzing out 15 moves. And still, you can blitz out 15 moves and be in the terrible time trouble, you know, by move 25. Bishop h6. F6 played. Any point in not exchanging the bishop for a rook? Like going e5, for instance? Mm, not really. Not really. Same reaction, it could be a rook to c8 and then takes and queen f6. Yeah. Yeah, bishop f8 played. So the question is if really he's... Oh, well, oh, rook c8 intermediate. That's interesting. That's the point. That's yes, interesting. Because we'll uh, yeah, we said if... Yeah, we already explained the drawbacks Yeah, so drawbacks rook takes rook is takes awkward eight. because queen a3. Yeah. Because queen a3 and now e7 is hanging as well as a7 is hanging so there is no queen d6. And a move like king f7, it's not like it's terribly bad but it, yeah. is, it feels awkward, like, uh, yeah, why mean, like would he go, bishop, yeah, bishop c4. c4 with some d6 ideas, so this is something you don't want normally. Uh, right, so, well, playing rook c8 intermediate, and then, wait, but in case of queen g3, for instance, it's not different, right? Or, yeah, well, the fact is that you probably won't go queen e3 now. Because then black yeah, can take, can take and take rook. on f8 with the rook. And uh, in case of king, queen g3... I think it may lead to the position that we already analyzed. Because So if the king takes e5, black is fine to take on e5. And, and it would be the same, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah and black, if rook takes, we just transport to the land. And there, there, there was no sense of playing rook c8 because I can just go queen e3. Ah, I mean here it, it's a clear transposition, yeah. yeah. So black went to c8 and then took on f8, white went to g3 and then to a3. Yeah. So uh, the idea of uh, rook c8 is of course to take on f8 with... Now, now, it, now it became clear. To take on a, uh, f8 with the king, yeah? Yeah, so king f8 is most likely to be played there. Yeah, well, first of all, he, di he didn't play, yeah, he didn't play queen g3 just yet because uh, what are... Wait, Maybe is some bishop c4? I mean, is bishop c4 a move? Okay, well, I mean, if it's I like self pinging never was a good idea, but yeah, you take and then ah yeah, queen d3 I thought, but once again, it's it's really awkward. No, no, it doesn't doesn't make sense. I mean, probably the queen g3 is the only move that keeps an idea to play queen e3 after rook f8, and. Uh, also has an idea, I mean, well, some supporting idea. Supporting e5, yeah. yeah. The other option Connect could be e5. queen d2. But I'm but not but sure then if the queen does a lot on h6. Yeah, but, but then black then you, you are rook. free to take with the rook as well. Yeah, let's say... Yeah, rook c1, you still can go rook c8. Yeah, yeah okay, well, another yeah, option is queen d3. I mean... Queen d3... 
the point that if you take was yeah, so king? The same. If rook takes, we, we always go queen yeah. a three, right? If if the king takes, so maybe rook b one. Rook b one to support, yeah, to control the b one square to support the rook on b one. Yeah, makes sense. So after queen c seven, for instance. Maybe something simple like queen e3 or queen d4, or maybe you know h h4 shouldn't be that bad. Move. It's like if White would have a luft for his king already, uh, for instance h4, and then Black somehow. Yeah, I mean it's not easy to to pass for Black a b6, right? But b6 is useful. Yeah, I thought like if white is to move and he already has the square for the king, the d6 seems to be strong. Yeah. For instance, like if black does play h5 for some reason, which is which is a bad move, white will have e5, uh, everything. But uh, just the idea, d6 breaking through. If the king take, oh sorry, if the queen takes, we trade the queens go rook b7. And it does look like something. Does look like some more active just rook. Like yeah, a seven is hanging. Okay, may maybe black saves bishop e six, but yeah, at least that, as an idea, it seems nice. And if black captures with the pawn after d six, then queen d four is a uh, one nasty double attack on f six and on a seven. Yeah. So once again, it's not much for white, but at least some Something. pressure, some pressure. But nobody's going to play h five, of course. Yeah, in case of h four, uh, black. Perhaps should just play b6. Intending to play queen c2, obviously. In case of, say, h5, yeah, white expands on the king side, but black goes queen c2, ready to trade the queens. And it's not easy to stop, by the way. It's like you, you don't want to play bishop d1, right? Yeah, it remains unclear. Some queen e3, queen, not sure. Maybe all of a sudden queen e6 is not that bad. Queen a6. Ty trying to tie black down to this a7 pawn. Yeah, but then I think black may have some counterplay connect with queen f4. Queen f4, rook c1 becomes an idea. Yeah, right. and also e4 and, and h4. Is hanging, is yeah, everything's yeah. hanging, yeah. Okay, I see the <laughs> variation. I see the line where white may lose by force. Playing queen b seven, then check. Rook c one. Take, yeah, takes, take, takes. And there is no bishop f one because yeah. bishop b five. Yeah. Okay. Well, I can play king h two, but at least black have a draw. Yeah, black. Well, definitely has a perpetual after queen c one, queen f four. Right. Alexander is still thinking. Uh, well, this is. Well, let's mention this is not the position where you sacrifice the queen, right? Because somewhere. You mean like some to take on c8 and other play bishop circumstances, e7? Yeah, I would consider taking on c8 and e7. It's like, well, we might argue that, yeah, the bishop is not bad, or I mean the dark square bishop. But yeah, I, th I, th I think white is still not worse. I mean, yeah, the position is probably white almost is equal. kind of not worse, but I it's really hard to believe that white will be playing this one for a win, right? Yeah. Bishop d7, king f7, and, you know. Yeah, but... Do we have some something concrete with black in this position? I mean, trying to prove that we are we have something well, more than f seven equality to start with. Well, d six locks the bishop on e seven forever, yeah. and bishop a three runs into some queen a fives and 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 taking on a two. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's right. It's pretty fast. So once again, I mean, if anything, it's not the queen sacrifice. So one more time, queen to a3, yeah. immediately you go king f8. Once again, this, those back rank problems are not pleasant, right? And surprisingly that it's not so clear which move to, which pawn to move, I mean like G3 has some drawbacks connected with some yeah, bishop, bishop H3, H3 issues. H3 also has some drawbacks because there, in some point, may be no defense against some perpetuals. Oh yeah, like queen c1, queen f4, yeah. Yeah, yeah f1 yeah, is, the not is not ideal. Yeah, and moreover, black is sort of threatening queen c5. 
Yeah, that's sort of a positional threat to go queen c5 so that to secure the file, the c file, and yeah, queen's exchange practically never a good idea for white. But at the point, all moves made by Nipomishi were very, very logical. I mean, like, queen b6 obviously is the most natural because, like, being an ex exchange up, uh, our plan is to keep. Um, yeah. Less uh, pieces on the board. I mean, yeah, obviously you want to, to trade, trade something. Trade the queens, yeah. So then, so after queen c3, bishop d7, fine. Bishop h6, and f6, practically forced. Yeah, and and rook c8 is Takes very rook logical. C8 is I mean, something you you're looking at. Yeah, absolutely. So I would be surprised that rook c8 wasn't prepared by pre Grishuk, yeah. pre pre prepared during the home analysis. Okay, well, queen b3 is not that good. I mean, yeah, like I, I think black simply takes, yeah, takes on f8, and once again, he he is the one who has the c file. Yeah, and probably just better position. Yeah, perhaps black black is just better here. Queen a1 is another strange looking retreat with the queen to prepare rook b1. But I'm not sure how serious that one is. Okay, well, I have to take. Takes, yeah. Rook b1, for instance. I wasn't sure of uh, queen c. Oh, well, but you don't need queen c5. Yeah, uh, I was looking at this line queen to c5, rook b7, a check on c1. Yeah, takes, takes bishop f1. Because it's not necessarily clear how black is getting the bishop on this diagonal. It's not not easy. Yeah. But at the same time, black doesn't need this, and after rook b1, he can go uh, queen c7. c7 with more or less the same idea of going queen c1 if the rook leaves the first rank, but at the same time not giving away the b7 pawn. Yeah, I think in this case, black should be, once again, black should be fine. So somewhat mysterious it remains. What was... Exactly the preparation of Alexander Krishuk. Because he seemed to be the right person to, you know, to put some problems in Grunfeld. He is no yeah, like known to be a decent theoretician and he plays the Grunfeld himself, so he could pick one of the lines which look unpleasant for him and test his opponents in it. But so far he seems to be the one who is tested. Okay, rook c8, right? That's the that's the position. What was the best try we had? Queen g3, king yeah, f8. So we, we've summed up that after queen g3, king f8, e5. Ah, yes, black so e5, take? yeah. Like takes, takes, queen f6. Okay. I mean, there is probably nothing wrong just moving the queen, like yeah. queen e3, and try to play this position, but. It's like unlikely that you are better here, but at the same time, as long as it's not an end game, white should not B really was, yeah. risk much. Yeah. Okay, well, like B6. Yeah, B6. And then, yeah, once again, it's, it's not clear what white is supposed to play. It's normally you should try to advance your majority, which is a uh, pawn's majority, which is, e in our case, white's king side. But, yeah, moves like h4 do not make all that much of sense. So just yeah, so th this looks, position this looks perfectly fine for black. This looks uh, perfectly as fine. As human being, and not knowing the exact evaluation, I would pick black in this position. Yeah, it looks, looks more than okay. And once again, all the time that was spent in this game was spent by Alexander Grish. So Alexander already has a 40, 46 40 something, yeah. So that's like 15 minutes on playing Queen C3, and now, well, at least 15 minutes more on what would seem more or less. So, like, not not the obvious solution, of course, but really, if you go for this position, you have to know what you're. Really puzzled with what goes on there, and once again we have to say like if one of those end game positions occurs on the board and Grushuk is not uh, ready, like not, haven't analyzed it at home, then this 
time factor might matter a great deal. Because Jan is on, well, more time than he had initially. One, one hour 36, how about that? A deep preparation with Nipomich, for Nipomich. Right, but on the other hand, I'm still trying to recall. Yeah, I mean, no, how no do they get this? Nothing, nothing very surprising. Could it be that castle is normally played first? I mean, that that's because yeah, just I do believe that this is a theoretical position. Castles, castles, knight c6, d5, knight to e5, takes takes queen to d2. For some reason, they go e6, f4, and put the bishop yeah. to c7. Once again, it's not to g7, them. but to c7. And and then it only starts here. <laughs> then it only starts here. Or to g7. No, here I think was... No, wait, but... Because I'm yeah, trying I'm, to... I'm wrong, yeah. Th this, this is... The whole point of bishop c7 is that you cannot play c4. Here you, you just go yeah. c4, you're yeah, much better. So. But this is how... The brain of chess player works. You see, I mean, I do not know the line, I do not remember the line, but just some similarities. And sometimes you would go for what you think is correct. And this is rubbish. It, it, if you, yeah, if you have maybe no to... knowledge whatsoever about the position, you would play better. But, <laughs> you know, the kind of false information. It's like it's a very common risk of playing forced lines because, like, you may know that for example 25 moves but then one you forget which is very important to know and all of a sudden your p position became just yeah it's once again becomes very very dangerous the you know the price of uh, what kind of uh, price yeah, the value of mistake, of mistake the value of each mistake because yeah in queen's gambit declined in some say Lasker variation you play not the most precise move and instead of position being absolutely equal you get slightly worse position but in really sharp lines and once again like bishop g5 Kronfeld, this poison pawn variation yeah. you can confi slightly confuse something and then you're lost yes like lost immediately so in one position it has to be knight b to d7 first in the other position it has to be bishop b7 first and you confuse them you think okay anyway i'll play th this on the very next move and you practically stand no yeah. second chance. Concrete variation should be properly analyzed and played by the players, otherwise there are almost no sense in it because like if you do not know the exact theory, the exact ideas. Yeah well ideas is the is okay, the key, I'll, I believe yeah, uh, yeah. is the key word because uh, it's very hard to memorize you know just to me memorize all the lines by heart. Uh, well Yes, because like uh, yeah, the, the usual way to always you go and confuse something, right? So my point was that you try to understand. Okay, now yeah. he goes there, and I have to play. Well, referring to my yeah. Groomfield, uh, sorry, to my Knight of uh, example. Like now I have to play Knight B to D7, for example, because of that and that. Yeah. So he has the threat of doing this to my so position. The every move that. The chess player th th thinks about is the first question that might have come to mind. That's uh, what is the idea of the move? Yeah, but but what exactly I'm achieving with this? Move? Yeah. Th that's I believe the the perfect way to memorize the yeah. openings as well. Well, okay, we are we are not talking about the openings here. We are talking about Krishuk's queen being attacked and already for 15 moves. Oh, sorry, 15 minutes, he cannot really figure out uh, where this queen is going. Uh, it might as well be the sign of, you know, an early draw agreement. Sometimes it happens, like the player with white trying to look for... I mean, because the position, despite all those spicy lines we were trying to show, the position might become very, you know, very simple and rather drawish in the next few moves. And it's but we, did, hmm? but we didn't mention the concrete way how to make it very simple. Yeah, so how to how to let's say if if white switches to the idea yeah. of okay, let's make, make it super draw. safe. Let's yeah, let's go for a super safe play. Okay, like even trading the rooks still still would be somewhat yeah. in black's favor. Yeah, the the more you trade, yeah. 
So the pawns, the A and B pawn. It's like uh, Black will continue insisting on trading the queens, and uh, at some point, if White will decline this proposal, yeah, it, 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 it can become worse and worse. We this, and Rook C1, for yeah. some reason White wants to trade the Rooks, right? How do we do it with Black? We take, take, and put this, this thing in the center, yeah. normally, like Queen D4. Yeah, like chaining a bit. Is it, and it's not so clear what to do. I mean, probably bishop f3, perhaps. I mean, you have to defend this this guy. Right? Yeah, you have to de defend the pawn on e4. It's a bishop f3. Well, even b5. We keep talking about those pawns, so let's move them. B5. Or or, or or maybe we can restrict the queen playing bishop b5. Oh, bishop b5. Was it to play the uh, queen bishop c4 or queen c4 and then b5 f5. I mean, yeah, like, so first of all, like, to because activate of, our pieces. Once again, back rank issues, uh, white cannot live with the queen. Okay, yeah. you can give a check on c8, but then... But then you're forced to go down, because queen e1 is the threat. Okay, queen well, a1, yeah. Maybe, but it could I, be, like, you, yeah. you go h3, and it all finishes with some sort of perpetual, right? <laughs> check, yeah, back to... Oh, check and back to d4, or back to d4 immediately. Or queen b2, yeah, b2. as well. <laughs> okay. Potentially might lead to simplification. But once again, for some reason, I'm hopeful that Grishuk will demonstrate what the opening idea behind uh, his moves order was. And will show us, and show Jan Nepomnishi, of course, first of all, and show us as well looks the, like, looks say, like the danger of this. Grishuk is a bit worried or just. He shows it. Uh, I mean, yeah, he doesn't look like hundred percent certain of what he's doing. Yeah, that's that's the feeling. That's the feeling. I mean, like emotionally, he he's not very. I can't say. He's not very happy with 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 what the what's situation on the board. The world, yeah, well, yeah. let's uh, let's face it. Alexander doesn't look uh, well. Very happy until yeah, the, he, until the tournament is over and he yeah, he's yeah. the winner. I mean, he really looks like he's really smiling and everything. During the interviews, he's very emotional. Yeah, but during the game, doesn't look like yes. But now we can say that Alexander Krushuk looks worried. Some reason I'm, I'm starting to think of uh, what awaits us in game two, <laughs> even though it's game one in progress. But uh, what opening? Jan will play. So most likely e4, e4. and then... Why, why not Sveshnikov again? Yeah, it can because be like Grish again. Grishuk is very, I can't say he's very principled, but usually when he starts to play some line during the tournament, he never changes. I can't say he never changes, but he rarely changes rarely his... Changes yeah. The line, yeah. And that's a policy for a, lo for a lot of yeah. top chess players. Like, like if we think Magnus Carlsen as well, like he picks up you mean the, like line, during the world championship. For match. instance, yeah, especially for the world championship matches and then in the in the match and then a few tournaments after the match. He goes yeah. with the same line because you, you did a lot of job preparing this. And also and if, if it works well for you, why not to continue? Because like uh, Magnus has won a match against Caruana playing Sveshnikov all the time. Like uh, probably he won one rapid game. I mean, they were all draws in classical part, mm -hmm. and probably he won a single game in the rapid part of the match. Yeah. With black and uh, Grishuk yeah, playing d4, like uh, the only draw was against Wesley Saw in classical part, but the other two games he played with white just worked well for him. Queen, Queen f3, f3. The yes. move we didn't look at uh, at yeah, all, and, pro probably and a very clever one now that I realize, because you, well, might be not very happy taking with the king because e5. Yeah, but I, I mean, th at least I, I, there is. I think we checked it in some lines. I mean, like, or probably not. Nah, this, this one, I don't think we, we, we were looking at queen g3, queen f3. Of course, yeah, you normally don't like to take with the king, and otherwise, it sort of forces black. I mean, if you take with the rook, then it forces this position, which yeah. for some reason we thought should be should be good for white. So, so well, we. That that one we simply missed. Okay. Queen yeah, F3. but I I, th I think uh, Nepomuchi. Nepo should know. Yeah. yeah. Twenty 
two minutes, uh, 21 minutes and 50 seconds was spent on queen retreat to f3, uh, waiting for Jan to come back to the board. The funny thing would be if Jan will decide to take on the f8 with the rook. <laughs> so that would uh, quickly. So that would mean we would get the same position as we could without intermediate rook c8 and queen f3. But Grishuk will have 20 minutes less on his yeah. clock. So we can say that rook c8 kind of worked out. So well, like if you'll try to predict. Yeah, let's try with the king. Yeah, let's try to take with so the probably king. Probably e5 is the only yeah, point e5. in queen f3. Now the question is what uh, what black is doing. Because once again, there is a possibility to allow e6. I mean, you probably should allow e6 by this point, <laughs> since you cannot take. Yeah, I was thinking of playing, say, queen d4 or, or queen b2. Something. Yeah, I was thinking about queen b2 because e6. Like, d4 allows some rook d1, e6. And bishop, say, bishop e8 or bishop, even bishop a4 might. No, no. Why would you want to put it on a4? Maybe bishop e8. Yeah, but a4 like protecting the d1 square. Okay, let's so it say. Has some sense. Yeah, okay, let's well. say you go there. Your next move apparently is rook c1 to trade the rook. Yes. Jan takes with the king. He doesn't look all that surprised. He takes with the king, and this time, Rishuk is back quickly. takes with the king, e5 is the most principled, and to be honest, I don't really see another move. I yeah. mean, queen f3 is clearly made, made with the intention to go e5. e5, yeah, by the way, after e5, can he try to play bishop f5? Yes, I'm thinking about it. Bishop f5, because g4 is sort of double-aged. Or maybe it isn't. Ah, you go g4, you go d6. Yeah. That, maybe that's the problem. So Bishop c2 and then d6. Yeah. To, to explode the king side. Yeah. And, and and Bishop c2 is not the move that you yeah, really I was, want to I make. Yeah, I was thinking of that, that Bishop on c2 might not be placed that badly, because it practically shuts down the play for white rook. So, well, no rook d1, no nothing. And Rook on c1 is not doing all that much because some queen b2 will come, but d6 is very annoying. Then the king is left open, while white king is perfectly safe on g1. Right, so e5 played. Then this is perhaps the first critical test for Nepo's preparation. Right before that, he was doing everything fast. Queen b6, I suspect, was prepared at home. Yeah, three seconds spent on yeah. queen b6. After queen b6, all the moves he was making were logical. Some of them were forced as well. So I'm, I'm starting to think, I mean, is there any other threat instead of e6? Because taking on f6, black can take, I think. Uh, as take a, with the queen. queen yeah. with, as, I think as well as a, with yeah, pawn. Yeah, pawn takes and then putting the queen on d6 yeah. is also But the, the only question, like, if it will play queen f4 or queen g3 or mm -hmm. queen a3. So, yeah, so, so our guess was queen b2. By the way, queen d4 might still be fine. Yeah. Uh, point At being that after forces. e6, I was planning to go to a4 to cover d1. To cover everything. Yeah, then queen in the center... Looks decent. Uh, by the way, white, uh, sorry, black does have a threat of rook c3 in this position. Yeah, queen, strangely. queen d4 is fine. Maybe some, there is something forced like d6. To try to play d6. But this should I'm not sure. normally lead to equality. Wh queen takes e5. What is the point in playing d6 if queen e5 just simply... Ah, simpl strangely, simpl you're simpl not... Simpl simplifies the position immediately, no? Queen b7... You take e2, I suppose, right? Ah, oh, no, you can take on d6. Because of rook d1? Uh, rook d1 and... Ah, can't take d6. Yes, if rook b8 just queen d7. Rook b8, queen takes d7. Yeah, and there is White no back an extra pawn, made, yeah. No, nothing. Uh, what so else? No queen d6. No, the, the, then, yeah, then queen d6 is not possible. Mm -hmm. Queen takes b7. What else can I do? Queen takes e2 might... 
be not that pleasant, yeah? We need two queen d7. And then if rook moves... Yeah, okay, well, maybe I have to play rook e8 there. Rook e8, yeah, and he takes on a7, and this is... This is... Sad. Somewhat annoying. This is sad, yeah. He might still hold it? To, or, no, probably not, because d7. Yeah, so he'll yeah. have uh, passed pawn on d7, as well as the a pawn. Right. What so, else? So b7 is hanging, e takes, d takes, e7 is hanging. Not much. You have to take on e5, yeah. And then queen b7. Yeah, th this looks. actually looks very good for white. So queen d4, not a move then. But by the same token, what happens if queen b2 d6? Because. The only thing that we are protecting the b7 pawn. So far, but 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 yeah, but like the natural reaction is take on e5, yeah, which simply leads to the transposition. D7 is the serious threat now. Yeah. Right. So strangely enough, it might be that Jan has to enter one of those. Well, okay. How to protect against d6? Can he go king g7? So that d6 black will take on e5. Unpinning the the f pawn, as we said in case of e takes f6, black is ready taking anything. Yeah, takes takes, a rook e8 or queen f6 maybe. Ah, uh, yeah, b7 was hanging. Yes, yeah, so rook e8 is is the better move. E8. Maybe it's still it's playable. Should be playable for white, of course. Yeah, like queen queen a3 maybe. Defending the pawn so far, because yeah, and there is no proper trade for black. Yeah, queen f6 leaves you pawn down. It seems. Yeah, may yeah, maybe queen f6. You know, queen a7 and bishop c6. If he can do this and take the pawn on the very next yeah, that's move, yeah, that, that may lead to just that should be that should be fine position. for black. That should be fine for. King G7 is... King G7, yeah, but let's not forget White always has this E6 idea. Well, we, 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 we were not sure what is this, but... And again, like Bishop E6, A4 or Bishop, Bishop A4, A4, but this time it's Queen A3. So Queen A3 is still there. Mm -hmm. So Bishop E8. Bishop E8, still Queen A3 is but possible. Queen C5. Ah, but then you go Queen C5. Yeah, this one. So if if Black manages to play Queen D6 and then start to push pawns, like B6, Rook C5, yeah, looks looks decent for Black. So yeah, his king is still on f8. One hour twenty nine for Jan Nepomniši. I believe around half an hour left for for Greshuk, possibly thirty five minutes. Uh, yeah, we are reminded of the. Elo ratings of the players, that's a funny difference of one single point of Elo in favor of Nepomnishi. Uh, those two, by the way, are at current stage, are two highest rated Russian players, yeah. I believe, playing so in today this tournament. We see them, I mean, maybe the strongest chess games in, in, in Russia. Yeah. Well, uh, Artemiev is quite close. The, yeah. the one, uh, Artemiev the is player. improving, and I think he just recently entered the top ten. The top ten, yeah. Uh, without playing, I'd say. I, th I think it's because Nakamura. Yeah, be yeah because Nakamura uh, decreased uh, his elo and a little bit by making two draws in classical chess with Dubov, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, and the closest to Artemiev is probably Domingos, who performed really well in Russian team championship. That's funny. Dominguez, who represents United States, yeah. by the way, recently, so he switched the federation, and he <laughs> increased his elo in Russian team championship. That's and you know, well, like, if, 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 if a funny case may happen, like, if uh, Dominguez will reach that rating that would be higher than Nakamura, mm -hmm. and higher than Wesley, so, but probably he's just already higher than it Wesley, so, be, so yeah. now he may be just number two in the United States after Caruana. 
Yeah, well, speaking of United States national team, I mean, they, they do have fantastic team for uh, yeah, just uh, upcoming Olympiad. It was already, like, super strong and everything, but it didn't seem to be, like, all round. So they had three prominent players. Yeah. Uh, Hikaru, Go well, well perhaps so. uh, we, we should mention Fabi first, then Hikaru and Wesley Saw. And fourth board was always shifting. Yeah, yeah, at, some, like at, some point, and... yeah at some point it felt like Sam Shankle should establish himself as board number four. Then Ray Robson had like a very good season and he was board number four. Anyway, but now with the addition of uh, Lenier Dominguez and then say Shankland as yeah, the... Yeah, so they may just the an all-star team. Yeah, that, that's absolutely incredible. They should be, first of all, should be top-rated and, and all the chances to, you know, to win the next Olympia. Yeah, by the way, the Russian average, uh, the Russian national team average hello has decreased because Vladimir Kramnik, Kramnik um, re retired, as I can say. Uh, well, we at least that's the information we yeah. have because there are rumors that he he will come back at some point. So you never know. Yeah, a, as of now, we do know that Kramnik is not planning to come back to competitive play at least on the classical time control. Yeah, and up to now, the most experienced like Russian national team players are uh, Gr Grishuk, obviously, Jan Nepomnishi, I think Peter Svidler, yeah, as well. Recently, not making it to a national team. That that's also funny. Yeah. The, the fact that Switler is like eight times Russian champion, and and he's he's not even on the list. I mean, I believe last time he played was team well team like championship. Hunt, yeah, it was well team championship hunt. This uh, that's a couple of years ago. Yeah, he was playing board one, and I think made all draws something. Right, but Russia has new players. Artemiev performed incredibly well on, you know, on last, once again, last World Team Championship in Kazakhstan, which yeah. was March this year. And they they won gold, and he won. I mean, he scored massively on on. Yeah, he scored on like last. six and a half out of eight. Yeah, or probably just something. Yeah, yeah, like plus five. So something has to be done if if uh, Russia still hopes for, you know, for good results in team chess. Yeah, Something uh, has to be done about about Karyakin, first of all, yeah. who seemingly is not in the top form, st still cannot get at that level he was when he won the candidate. So something something happens to. But Jan seems to show much more stable results. Yeah, and also we have a lot of hopes on uh, Vladimir Felisev and Daniel Dubov. Yeah, so two who already played like a couple of tournaments for the Russian national team. Right, so obviously Russia does have a strong team no matter what, right? It's like like it was in I, I believe in Hunter Olympiad uh, the, the previous the, not not the upcoming Olympiad 2020 that's going to be, uh, right? If I'm not or mistaken like the 1994 Chess Olympiad where three teams represented were represented by Russia and at some moment of the tournament, probably the third team was higher than the first one, yeah. where probably Alexander Morozevich and other, like Vadim Zvegintsev and other players uh, played for this like third like uh, team of youngsters. Yeah, but well, I thought it was later, actually. Or maybe 1998, not, not like, yeah. s some of these years. Yeah. So that means, yeah, once again, if we would uh, think of team event, which is played like on 20 boards, then yeah, of yeah. course, well, you don't need 2010 boards would be enough, to, be enough to say that yeah, Russia is favorite forever, <laughs> right? Because yeah, really a lot of grandmasters on on like very top level and close to a top level. And nowadays, if you think of other countries, it's like well, in United States, you do have I believe 10 players yeah. which would the like n not really mismatch the, the, the team. Yeah, right. Well, like Ray Robson we can think of uh, well Sam Sevian possibly, then you have experienced players like Akobiano Nishuk. Yeah. Also China. Uh, yeah, China, well perhaps, yeah, up to ten players you can find. And India, well that there will be difficulties. Yeah, it will really, really depend on those super young talents. 
who are given credit who are indeed so very it, it, strong it, it, it needs it, it needs a couple of years just to yeah. estimate the yeah to see really what what's going on uh well uh, back to the game though because after e5 now it's Jan's turn to think uh trying to update there yeah, not nothing yeah nothing is given away we 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 know that it took Jan a couple of minutes to take on a fate with the king, but he wasn't present. I mean, it could be that he simply came back to the board and made the move immediately. Yeah, so Jan, now he started. Now he has spent already some to some ten minutes. some theory to our analysis. Probably this position never occurred. Yeah, I, I don't think this particular position was already played. Yeah, it should be should be that quite a few players know the evaluation. Like, like in modern, once again, in modern researches in theory. Yeah, obviously, you, like, al like Alpha Zero you are led by, the, Yeah, I mean, evolution. you are led by computers, so uh, I don't think that you... There is any position that you can be sure, okay, I found it, and that's kind of my novelty, nobody else is going to know it. So we all have the same computers, the same engines. Okay, at least the engines are the same. The computers are different. Some have more powerful, some have ultra-powerful. Computers, right? But yeah, essentially, most of the positions that are analyzed, they are analyzed simultaneously by various groups of players. So, uh, King to g7. Yeah, Jan, Jan so has followed he, your advice. So he does allow e6 if white wants it. And then the other, the other version was to go d6 for white, yeah, right? Or yeah, e6. Seem to us less promising than d6. Yeah, e6, bishop e8, and we said, oh, yeah, we said that we don't really see how to continue in that one. d6, uh, what happens case of, once again, yeah, what happens case of d6? Black captures, takes on e7, and then we've concluded that rook e8, rook e8 to start with does seem to be um, a decent move. Yeah, at some point I was thinking of, you know, like queen d5, yeah, rook e7, bishop c4, uh, using the fact that bishop e7 is really, uh, bishop e6 is really awkward, white takes only 5 with the check, but yeah, after queen f6, exactly, I can't see uh, how white is supposed to, to continue and what he can get out of it. He can give a check on g8, but then after king h6, the king is safe and black is up a pawn. So perhaps a, uh, instead of a silly check, he has to take on b7, and this more or less looks like a draw. Bishop e6. Yeah, I mean, like I mean if, if, you, if you want to eliminate all the danger, I believe bishop c6 is, should be a decent move, but if you want to eliminate all the danger, you just go bishop e6, you trade the bishops, and you're... Bishop e6 seems more logical, because otherwise white will play bishop b3, while the bishop on c6 may become a target in some... In some cases, yeah. yeah. Bishop e6, so queen has to leave. You trade on c4, and then I don't know, you go e4, or do not go e4. You just just yeah, played I think like queen d6 and queen d4. Mm, yeah. Queen d6, rook f7, the queen d4 just. The black is su super solid in this case. Well, kind of of obviously it it shouldn't be enough to win this position yeah, for white. Slight, and, and slight this edge at this because level of, because of, of isolated e pawn, but once again. The moment you win this e pawn and trade the queens, it will be like equal rook <laughs> endgame or drawish rook endgame. Yeah. Obviously not equal because of an extra pawn. Yeah, well, so King G7 is played. So I'm trying to. So this is the current position. Okay, we can try again. E6 instead e of E takes six. six because it's not so clear what to do else. I mean, like uh, yeah, Black is threatening to take on E5. Take. Uh, in uh, no attractive move that I can see. Yeah, well, so okay, let's check E6. Yeah, once E6 again. Bishop goes to E8. The problem with Bishop A4 we've already mentioned. It's Queen A3 double attack. The bishops attacked and the e7 pawn, so that's something that uh, black certainly doesn't want. 
Well, bishop e8 seems to be fine. Then queen a3 is met with queen c5. And it's really hard to imagine white being better in this case. Yeah? Simply no. I think so, yeah. Now yeah, it's time to start. It's, it's time to s start thinking about inequality. Yeah. And if not queen a3, once again, not clear how do you... Yeah, well, essentially, it's, it's not easy to get the rook in play. Right? Rook d1, hoping to... Yeah, then once again... Yeah, I think we, yeah, we just made the conclusion that queen d6 yeah, is queen d6 fine should be controlling should be fine. everything on the board. It was very clear plan while... Well, it's not allow clear. allowing black to play b5 and a5 can be dangerous. Yeah, so this seems to be very, very solid for black. Once again, one of the possible ways of improving the position could be going g5, bishop g6. Yeah, so in we e we expect d6. Yeah, d6, d6 looks e5. more logical, but then at the same time it leads to simplifications. It seems rook yeah, well, e8, like and queen, then what was queen, our queen what was our e line? Queen oh, d5 sorry, queen or queen a3, right? Yeah, queen five queen a3 seven. we also tried. Could be something else. Uh, wait, queen d3? Don't know what does it do, though. Queen d3, I mean, yeah, if rook takes, I was hoping to go rook b1. And maybe, wait, 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 maybe bishop f5 is the, the, actual, the actual move. Yeah. Well. Bishop f5. Just winning. <laughs> I mean, I will, I will, I'll have to take on b6, go rook b2, but it's pawn up for black. Yeah, that's pawn up for black. Th then queen, e queen d3 is pointless because, yeah, th the whole idea was to go to go rook b1 and then... <laughs> and I, I think as well black may start with bishop b5. May start with bishop yeah, but queen, okay, well. Not allowing queen d3 is better to take on e7 immediately. Mm -hmm. So if not queen d3, I'm trying to recall yeah, okay, what we analyzed. There was one line we were looking at. If white goes queen a3, uh, black plays queen f6. I'm not sure how, how, I mean, till what degree he's forced to go queen f6. But if he wants to, he can go queen f6. Queen takes a7. I don't, I don't see the way to protect e7 pawn any longer. Yeah. So you take on a7, black plays bishop to c6, and then captures e7, the next move. Looks very solid for black. Once again, he does have this somewhat weak e5 pawn, but not much. Not not really. Yeah, not really something serious. Uh, so time for Krishuk to make a move. Any other ideas? Yeah, King g7 was played, yeah. I believe. Yeah, King g7 was played. So one more time. No D6. ideas. Just d6. Yeah, d6 black always takes on e5, right? Yeah, well, queen a3 should Queen a3 here? Yeah, but it's queen, queen c5. c5. And this... Perhaps the best white can do is to trade to go... Yeah, once again, to trade to go e6 to protect the d5 pawn, but we've concluded that in this case it's only black who can be better. This endgame. Yeah, okay, well, I can take on f6, forcing you to take with. But I'm not forcing you to take with pawn. I mean, like, if queen f6, I can king play queen b2 and take on b7. Queen b2, and it on may b7. be something. Yeah, that's but you can okay. take with yeah, pawn. Yeah, pawn takes, I don't see what's wrong so with taking. My idea was to play probably queen b3 there. Queen b3, just keep say b6. Keep yeah. keeping the, DC, the d5 pawn alive. Maybe I can start some, with something like bishop a6. Not rook c7, my idea was to play rook e1. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I, first of all, yeah, queen a5. Uh, queen a5 double attack, yeah, Anna, I, I, but there is rook e7. Yeah, rook e7, and no, but then, I mean, probably just no, doesn't work because of rook, rook e7, e7 king goes, and d6, right? But d6, rook, f, rook c1. Bishop f1. 
Ah, and then you have... No, you don't have is, anything. Is it that clear? It may be. The e1 square is protected because first I thought you have rook takes yeah. f1, king takes f1 and, and check from five, b5, but, but white yes. simply goes back to, to g1. So there that is. was um, queen a3 immediately. Queen to c5, one more time, takes on f6. And yeah, pawn takes, queen b2, we said, or queen b3, queen b3, we said, yeah. b6, bishop a6. And he might get rook e8. Yeah, here. just control the e file. Yeah, the problem with d5 pawn that it's not moving forward anytime soon. And if black is in so time just to, to be go sure, I'll play queen d6. Queen d6, <laughs> yeah. Then lift the rook, go bishop e8, bishop f7. This pawn might be lost one day, or white will have to, you know, to defend it with all the pieces, and then it's not possible to move it forward. Okay, so just black is fine. And yeah, and those are kind of typical. Uh, not, I would say, not for Grunfeld, but more for how it's called, semi tarish right? Yeah. All right. Yeah, e takes f6. The move is that we did not expect. E takes f6. Oh, I think. I think we. G7, e f6 check. We were considering. Okay, queen f6 and once, and now queen in, e3. once in this case. And now queen e3. Queen a3, yeah. right? So that somewhat awkward for but well, a6. Perhaps I mean you have to you have to guard the pawn. E6. Well, White might pretend that he's playing for a win, like bishop uh, rook e1, maybe something. Rook e1, uh, bishop f3, maybe hoping for some d6. Still, once again, e in such positions, if you give black some time to build up, then he'll be better. Yeah. He'll be That's better. So, so it has to be like, you know, very precise tactical mm, way to kind of not giving black an easy life. So and by the way, if the pawn takes, the pawn takes, what's, what's the plan? Same queen, no, queen a3 now. Queen a3, queen c5, we'll lead to our position. line. Yeah, we'll yeah. lead to our line. Maybe I can try to secure the g6 square, but. I like going queen f4, for instance, right? Not letting. Not giving black the possibility to block the d pawn. Yeah, but at the same time, I don't know what to do next because, like. Maybe rook d1 is an only Yeah, rook d1, idea. yeah, h4 from on uh, h4 from yeah, on the king should side. be useful. Yeah, well, this might be the game. This might be like not not black not equalizing immediately. I can imagine. Right. So what's the time situation? Uh, I can see that Nepomniki is on one hour twenty. That's understandable. So a couple of moves before he was playing, I mean, he was playing very fast a couple of moves before he had more time than the initial time given to each player. Grishuk, <laughs> Nipomishi replies immediately after. Yeah, EF6, EF6, and H3. Instead of H4. Yeah. Less ambitious, but <laughs> more solid. More solid, and looks like Grishuk is, well, at least trying to say that he is happy with this position as it is. Uh, what's his reply to queen d6 though? I'm not sure. I, I do like this move. Queen d6. Stops queen a3, right? Black is ready to go b6. So I mean, I'm trying to find the plan for white. Because like solidify and play in rook d1. My point I mean, was provokes the question: What what are you going to do next after playing Rook D1? Yeah, we can we can look at at uh, following sequence of moves. For example, Rook D1, Bishop to E8. Then Black puts the Bishop to F7, puts the Rook to say C5, attacks the D5 pawn three times. So White can defend it. It's it's not a question of Black winning the pawn. But then Black starts moving A and B pawn. Yeah, and this at some point should lead to like. You know, total liquidation. So, white takes one of the pawns on the queen side, black takes in on response D5. the pawn on d5, and the players agree a draw. 
it's very hard to imagine that white will have you know something that will be against this plan Jan looks a bit puzzled I have to say not looking at the board trying to yeah sometimes th this kind of look would uh, mean that he is trying to recall what was what was set in his analysis even though it's already moved 20 uh, uh, 21. 21. Yeah. So of 21, so. Queen d6 looks natural. You might not need it immediately, but. Or maybe if Black. Black will try to pretend for more. Yes, like he, he might not need it. He might. Uh, uh, once again, I'm, I'm not sure if my idea of putting the bishop on f7 is any good. But if it is, then he might start with bishop e8. Yeah, but it, it should be connected. I, I mean, personally, it's, yeah, I think. Uh, queen d6, I, I queen think. D6, yeah, yeah, but by the movement of his uh, hand, it looked like. Yeah. To, just to. You know, otherwise, in such positions. You always, on every single move, you have to watch out for d5, d6. Yeah. d5, d6. I always have to check. So it. queen d6 just... The queen d6 is like solid. S sets black free from the ideas connected with queen d5, d6. Very solid. And yeah, now finally we can see the clock. It's 27 minutes <laughs> left. 50 minutes. Yeah, 50 yep. minutes difference. That, that's, that's a huge one. The position is fairly simple, though, in terms of... You know, st strategic in ideas in, in yeah. comparison to the possible. Yeah, what well, what you can have from yeah. Grunfeld, yeah, th that's one is like fairly simple. So do not expect Krushuk to have like, serious issues with his time. But still, I think Black's main idea. I mean, if they're trying to have some advantages, can, should be connected with trading of queens. So, for example, yeah. if just if. Imagine if you put the queens out of the board, the king proceeds to d6 yeah. square and no, but then, then... But then black is just better, yeah. I believe. Because d pawn is not running anywhere and, and you push your b and a pawn trying to create a passer for yeah. yourself. And yeah, well, once again, it's like one of the key factors in this position would be the d pawn. Why d pawn? Because it's at the same time, it is a passed pawn and it might be the weak pawn. And if we trade the queens, a black all of a sudden gets an extra piece to, you know, to fight in yeah. this this part of the board. He can bring the king to e7, while for white to bring the king somewhat to support this pawn to d4, of course, is, uh, well, desirable, but, but how do you do it? The king from g1 it's too far. is not reaching d4 very fast. So that's usually the logic. Yeah, well, king's activity is... is very often, you know, kind of undervalued by less experienced players, so that but you think, yeah, you, you trade the queens and, and nothing changes much, so like your opponent, what one of your opponent's u units li leaves the board and then your your queen leaves the board, but yeah, an end game allows the king to, to take part in the game, and then you always have to have to think of it, like whose king's going to be first to enter the main theater, let's say. Uh, 25 minutes we well some patience needed by Grishuk because if rook d1 I think black may start with rook c2 there I mean I can't estimate is it good or bad if we're just forcing white to play a2 a3 but uh, looks more or less natural yeah looks nice and and the rook on rook on second rank is of course something normally you'd be happy with so it's like again still my main idea for black is tr tr try try to trade the bl the queens and but after a3, a3 personally i don't see the concrete line where black can achieve an end game i'm a bit worried of rook a2 to be honest which so is like yeah, it is some. Oh no, there is no, there isn't. I thought queen b3, but the bishop is hanging. Yeah, it is somewhat provocative. It's like I'm leaving the c file. I'm just going, you know, ready to spend time to take your pawn. But where's the counterplay for white? Not clear. Not clear. 
So perhaps it shouldn't be rook d1. Perhaps white should look for a more precise move after queen d6. D5 would, pawn would be strong if uh, white would have at least, I mean, if the sides would have at least one extra pair of minor pieces. But in this position, yeah. with a white color bishop, with no knights, it's just, I mean, I don't see yeah. even a single continuation where it may pass to d6. Yeah, it's like the worst, uh, perhaps the worst, uh, you Scenario. know, material for white. Yeah. It's like uh, even worse would be to have black knight on d6 instead yeah, yeah. of bishop on it d7. Would be just better for black yeah, so bishop. black would be better. For but then, once again, yeah, with any other minor pieces, like with dark square bishops, yeah, it would be dangerous. a possibility. Yeah. yeah, it would be dangerous for black. It would be always a possibility for white to play some bishop f4 to kick the queen away. Yeah, to so to just wrong material uh, left on the board for Grishuk and everything is. So far looks perfect for yeah, for, for his opponent, for Yanni Pomnici. Right, so maybe indeed it's a good time for Alexander to switch to, you know, uh, finding defense. the... Uh, well, maybe not defense just yet, but finding the, the safest way. Yeah, like how do we play with white in order to not risk anything. Uh, well, by the way, speaking of safe way, can I do this? Queen b3? B6, I suppose. Yeah, I think right? it just may lead to the same. And then to 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 do to go there. Yes, that's one of the. Go yeah, there. I, I mean, it's like this trade would be useful for kind right. of justifying H3 move. Like, first of all, right? Then F5 is you know liability. I'm not sure <laughs> if it's like a bad move, but I mean playing yeah, F5 black, black is should be responsible to yeah, play F5. It's not what you necessarily do want to do in this position. Playing F5. Yes, but it's not, it's, it's not that bad that because probably just H the bishop G4 is. I think it's just a good idea. Yeah, and then put the bishop on F3 so that D5 is protected, and then might be some annoyance caused by Queen B2 check. Let's say if Queen goes to F6, then some Queen A3. In case yeah, well, of yeah, in case of Rook C5, for instance, he might start with Rook E1, and then Queen B2 becomes an issue. So here, at least I can see some. Ideas for white. Yeah, well, bishop g4 in. Just, just realized that. Yeah, after queen b3, for instance, I thought, okay, may maybe black should be more clever. Yeah, maybe yeah, black yeah. Uh, has to go there. But still, after bishop g4, it's not that you can comfortably yeah. decline the exchange because the bishop, the bishop lands on e6. It's not uh, like you can do. Yes, this. but maybe in this case. Maybe you take uh, yeah, rook d7 and. This is this shouldn't be anything yes, special. Yes, but you would never. I can't say that b6 pawn is. I mean, like b6 allows some uh, additional options connected with c6. Yes, some squares. I mean, yes, and so at some point it's better to. You probably I mean, prefer it on b7. Yeah, even. The, the point that pawns never move never back. Never move yeah. back. Yeah, exactly. Uh, bishop e8, bishop a6, and probably now I can try to play. A bishop steal f7. to go bishop yeah. f7. I mean, uh, yeah, the, point, the point. The point that yeah. if you take, which is. Probably maybe a, a silly move. Yeah, you can take either with king or with rook. Yeah, I think with rook is okay. And then play b rook g7, forcing white to protect the deep on No clear ideas how to convert. Yeah, e even this, this one. Yeah, shouldn't be anything. Shouldn't be. I anything mean, if you more. try to push on the king side, it will lead to some. Yeah, your know, your own king yeah. gets weaker. Yeah, so that's. Yeah, usually what happens in, in such structures is, once again, black attacks the d5 pawn as many times as he can, so in this case two times, and then he starts pushing the a and b pawns, yep. distracting one of the white pieces, and it normally leads to exchange of, of the d pawn for yep. one of the queen side pawns. So, usually, unless the pawn gets too far, like with, let's say, same material, but if we imagine for some reason, let's say, after rook d1, black g gets crazy, goes queen d7. Then after d6, this is serious trouble, right? Yeah. It might still not be lost, but this is, might as well be. Yeah. yeah. This is serious trouble. So the less space you have, the more advanced the past pawn is, the, dangerous it is, the more dangerous it becomes. And that's a kind of rule that if you have an option to just push your pawn, just do it. Yeah. Past pawns have to move. That, that's what we, uh, they were telling us. Uh, so, queen d6, Alexander is thinking, yeah, and, and 
indeed, his move h3 kind of suggests that he has this idea of bishop g4 in mind. Yes, because so even this h3 move wasn't as simple. I mean, the, our first uh, intention was that h3 is connected with like protecting some back rank issues, but also, I mean, li like the good move has not the only idea. Yeah, but it's kind of a multi purpose usually. Yeah, yeah. I'd say. Because otherwise, h4 would be in a way more natural, right? Expanding, yeah. possibly pushing the pawn to h5. Now that I think that it could be that after h4, black changes his mind, go, go, go h5. goes h5 yeah. himself. All right, so queen d6, 18 minutes only for Alexander Grishuk, and that might be the time trouble we were talking about, strangely enough. Because the position still I is still quite complex, and okay, well, I, I I'm pretty sure that Grishuk sees the lines that we already mentioned connected yeah, with Bishop, Bishop, Bishop G4, G4 yeah. and just uh, almost confirming. I mean that there is just an equal position. I have a deep one, you are solid, and we can agree. But he's yeah. trying to find. Also, and there's some way, yeah, some yeah. way to try to apply some pressure on Jan's position. And once again, this is not easy to do at all. Yeah, otherwise it's it's not easy to to see what what could be the other plan. D1 we, we, we've tried, right? It's like Otherwise, where do you put the bishop? You, you, you can try to go... Uh, one of the things I thought about was putting the bishop to D1 and B3, but then once again, it's restricted by, by your own pawn. Yep. So we've reached the point where it's more than one hour difference on the clock. And this is not typical even for Alexander Grishuk, who is known to, you know, to, to consume like a lot of time. Uh, well, we used to joke that, you know, half an hour spent, that, that means Grishuk is obviously, obviously still knows the theory. Like first half an hour doesn't, doesn't, <laughs> mean, doesn't mean anything. But now, you know, it's like every move which is not forced, not a capture, takes him well, and some moves that are a capture, like for instance, after King G7, EF6 took him 10 minutes to, to decide on. H3, and then strangely H3 on seconds. So, well, obviously he made the decision about H3 thinking of his previous move. Queen D6. Yeah, can't say that Jan was put at some serious test so far in this game. Very comfortable for Jan Nepomnici. Mm. And throughout the tournament, was he ever... Yeah, against Wojtaszek in, yeah, in, in, in the tiebreak, in obviously. That was that was the only game where he was like really in trouble. I think in both games, with black uh, pieces. Could be with... Yeah, one of them was just like worse, and the other one was lost at some point, yeah. at least we believe so. Jan, after the game... Uh, yeah, once again, we are referring to the... Tiber games. After the game, he said that he was planning to give an exchange in game one with the black pieces, and uh, said that black would still have practical chances. And he's apparently right on this one. But once again, objectively, like if we if we imagine when we say objectively, we usually mean that if we pair two computers to play this position, this position yeah, against each other, against, against each other, and then that that would more or less mean the objective evaluation of this position and it was winning for his opponent but in the match against we he just took his chance like uh, yeah but he, we, he was we, never worse yeah. right I mean. and then the last game where Nipomishi won the game and it was final in the match he just I mean used the chance to yeah, I, th I, I mean, think by the moment when Wei blundered, he was already kind of outplayed, right? And and Jan yeah, was and I think already it was somewhat a kind better. of punishment uh, of the opening that uh, yeah, we played. Yeah, the opening was very strange. Right. Speaking of Grishuk's road to the final, speaking of his matches, once again, I don't uh, remember if he was worse in any game. And usually we are 
kind of used to the fact that he was pressing with white. Yeah. So he converted, like he converted against three, uh, three of four games with white pieces. Yeah, he won. Uh, he played point. four yeah, games made, with white till yeah. till that uh, before that game. He played four games in with white in this tournament. He scored three and a half out of four. So really, really impressive. So the only draw being the classical game against Wesley Sol, and he won the tiebreak game and won against Nakamura. Very nice game. Quite a complex one, but looks like he was always the side who was having the initiative, and he won. Uh, well, long, but yes, rather one-sided game he against He calculated Ikeriaki. everything br brilliantly. I mean, the position was so complex. He saw his opportunities and possible Nakamura's refutations, and uh, he just at some point, I mean, the evaluation. I mean, that feature. The feature of evaluating the position just paid off for him. Yeah, I mean, he was, he was, uh, we can say about this much, perhaps he was better at any aspect of the game. Okay, so he kind of out, you know, how, how, do, you say, how do you go? Out understand, if I mean, if, if such verb exists. I mean, yeah, <laughs> so yeah. he showed better understanding, uh, well, compared to Hikaru in this uh, second game in the Catalan. And I when he like came to tactic, and strangely enough, yeah, we, we all know Higaru is a great tactician, but... but I like sure. saying out in the standing, we consider that uh, probably the position might have been equal after the opening, but he felt that uh, it it's easier promising. to yeah, it play is, it with yeah, white. It's like challenging for his opponent, for yeah. Higaru Nakamura, to find those good moves. All right, so I'm trying to understand the idea of Queen D3. I mean, it could be the same. Yeah. You, you can still go bishop g4 and so on. But it's not the tempo move. It feels like it looks like it allows black to go rook c5 with the tempo. And sort of tie down white pieces a yeah, bit. Yeah, no, and all this, the problem that after rook c5, it may lead to some forced simplifications. Like if you play rook d1, rook there, d1 is some, like, bishop there is b5. bishop b5. Yeah, like we have to. Goes. Yeah. Take, 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 take on d5. Take on d5. By the way, uh, I'm yet to see how white is equalizing because takes, takes, queen e7, yeah. black will be up a pawn. Yes, yeah, so. Yeah, the, the yeah, I forgot that black yeah, takes, like queen, takes, queen, 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 queen e7. Yeah, and, and queen everything seven, is protected. And black is up a pawn. So that perhaps means that after rook c5, the move that I actually kind of like. Unless there is some, once again, unless there is some trick, which is hard to believe. Because like if you have to play bishop f3, yeah, but then, bishop b5. then you do not get... Ah, well, then, then yeah, then just winning the exchange. Bishop, bishop b5. By the, by, by, the, by the way, the move? how to protect the pawn? Yeah, what's the move? Yeah, in case of various moves like rook b1 and trying to attack one of the pawns, you, you have to remember, yeah, you have to remember that rook then b5 comes bishop, with bishop c6. And no, h5. H5. Seems okay, it, at least obscure. I mean, it, it's sort of logical in a way because you stop bishop g4, but, but the concrete thing with rook c5, I'm, I'm yeah, yet, okay, to well, yeah, we yet to understand. Yet to understand what's... back to the game, but uh, after rook c5, I mean, for spectators, we can't explain how white will protect the d5 pawn. Yeah, so once again, rook d1, let, let's quickly try to find the... How is it equal? Because like taking queen b5, I think it's not a total It's not, not the position you... Yeah. Anyway, it's not the position you're happy with. Yeah. Even, even if it's somehow by some miracle is a draw. It, it, it's definitely... I mean, it's absolutely clear it's black who is trying. Yeah, yeah we, we are discussing this. Like if white... Uh, probably it's not a draw. It's just you, you, you're going to lose but it like sl uh, the slowly but surely. A6, B5, you know, king comes to E7. Yeah, I, I think that the, the black have to be urgent. I mean, they have to play A6, bishop C4, B5 immediately. Otherwise, white will play bishop C4 and then rook E1, rook E6, creating some like minimal but still threats. Like A6, bishop C4, B5. Bishop B3 uh, and A5. Accelerating the pawns, bishop B3, A5. And now, like... Uh, A4 is a huge threat. Like. Yeah. So I don't believe in moves like rook c1 and rook e1. It maybe just yeah. be worse for white. Yeah, most likely it is. 
Yeah, so after rook d1, bishop b5. Bishop b5, if the queen is moved. Yeah, I mean, you yeah, have to move I th the queen. Yeah, that, but there is no difference. That's I'll take only two very next simple, move. yeah. You move the queen, black captures on e2, black captures on d5. And not that I can see... Not really. It's really weird. It's yeah, how the hell do you keep Okay, it? well, like, rook d1, yeah, queen d3. Rook c5, yeah, and... Well, so the purpose of h5 move is, like, to play clear, against bishop g4. It's clear, to stop g4. bishop g4. Yeah. But after rook c4, yeah, bishop g4 Bishop g4, is g4 doesn't working. make all that yeah. much sense, because black takes. Uh, can you start with queen a3? Because now we are talking of white being worse, so perhaps queen a3 kind of secures an equality. If you take well, b5, at least I'm taking a7. Not very happy with this position, but at least I'm able to take a7. Right? And if a6, now at least I can play bishop f3 safely. There is no bishop b5. Maybe maybe that would be the solution. Yeah, queen e3, sure. yeah. Probably. You know, and it does seem that on every single move... Yes, but mm -hmm. I have to point out that a6... Yeah. I think you have to start with rook d1 because if bishop a3, I think I can take. Ah, uh, yeah, you so can. So you take, take, take on b7, but still, I consider this position is, as as uh, slightly better for black because he's the one. Yep. Yeah. So, so first hard. of all, I'll play rook, rook b6. b6 uh, for, ah, but you can bishop play bishop d5. d5. Yeah, but like those still. are usually yeah, but yeah, rook, oh, but a, rook it, end it, game is it, a draw. It, it leads to simplifications. Uh, yeah. This is a draw. Uh, all right. Maybe uh, h5 is just h5 a maybe, wise move. Yeah, maybe it's a pra practically an unpleasant move for Christian. So he clearly is not very happy with his position, right? And then h5 to keep the tension once again to prevent simplifications, to prevent black from uh, sorry white from going bishop g4, exchanging the bishops. Maybe that's more annoying in terms of practical chances. Uh, right. So Christian is down to 11 minutes only. Uh, so it's really, really a good time for him to speed up a little bit. It's move 22, so 18 more moves before the time control. And I believe we'll make a quick break right now to be back in time for the time trouble, which is, <laughs> seems to be inevitable. Six, uh, 18 moves and only 10 minutes left. So stay tuned. We'll be back shortly. <laughs>
Welcome back everyone. So game one of Moscow Grand Prix final is in progress. Uh, well, it looks that Alexander Grishuk failed to obtain any advantage with white and even more at some point we were worried if he isn't worse. So let's find out. He's, uh, he has much less time than he, his opponent, Jan Nepomnishi. So let's see what moves were made during the break. I believe the position is still close to equal. Uh, okay, so what have we seen? We've seen h5. That's perhaps the last, yeah, that was the last move we had seen. And Krishuk, uh, again, he spent quite a lot of time the, and played queen to d2, opting for queen a5 perhaps. Jan's reaction is a bit surprising to be honest. b5. Okay, it's not fully illogical. <laughs> you do want to move the pawns on the yeah. queen side, but why would you allow queen a5? Because I thought like b6 would be More or less normal slow, as yeah. well. Well, b6 may be bishop a6, right? Could it be that bishop a6 was disturbing and then putting the bishop to b7 at some point? Anyway, b5, queen a5, yeah, I, th I think we will have to speed up. Uh, somewhat because uh, Krishuk is very short on time so, so now the moves will come quicker quicker a6 bishop put on f3 and Jan bishop goes e8. bishop e8 so well more or less follows the scenario we were trying to describe that at some point black will take on g5 yeah black will uh, you know like put all the pressure available to on d5 square and try to take on d5 at some point. By the way, like, my prediction is White will play rook d1, mm -hmm. then bishop f7, then some move, but maybe it's not so easy to... To figure out wh uh, which, which is exactly. some move in this position. Like h4, for example, you might be a bit worried about rook... c4? c4, that's... that's uh, okay, that's what I thought. I'm not sure. G3, right? Then rook a4, for instance. Or maybe oh, on the other hand, anything. it's not doing anything on a4. Yeah, rook a4, queen d2. Yeah, the problem with rook c5, for example, that b white will have queen b4, and then this rook is pinned, and it's all of a sudden is quite awkward. By the way, if black. <laughs> show up with some ambitious ideas like g5 uh, g5 yeah could be okay you can obviously yeah, you, take, you, take. you take and go queen d2 back if you need yeah it's not like black's attack is really serious yeah maybe it just can become a weakness yeah so well like bishop f7 is the most logical there yeah, is some kind D1. of a two swung because, like, after h4, I don't see the next move in except g3. I Half mean, for white, yeah. Yeah. Well, you can play queen d2 back, but. Right. If black wants to secure the equality, can he go rook d8 and then rook d7 and then move the queen? I think so, why not? Yeah, it's like rook d8, yeah, well, for, for, for the time being it's a little bit awkward because the rook on d8 is hanging, I cannot move the queen. But white is not doing much either, right? So, I uh, say g3, and you know, then like maybe uh, rook c1, c1 this, this moment, yeah, that's a that's, uh, question, because bishop takes d5, there is rook d1. Yeah, which is very, very unpleasant. this pin just is, just winning. yeah, just wins uh, on a spot, it seems, yeah. Does it? Yeah, I think yeah. So. No, queen e seven. I thought, but then yeah, e one if, if, e one square if, if, is protected. If the rook have been on d seven, you would play just uh, bishop queen c6 e six. Or yeah, or queen sorry, e six. Yeah. Queen e six or queen c six, but but not here. Yeah. So it's like Jan allowed queen a five move for Grishuk, but uh, now we re suddenly realized that. Queen e5. I mean, I, it it not. Th I can't say that it's not that good, but it's just yeah. The, uh, queen, the queen is nicely placed on a5. Yeah. 
you know what? After rook d1, I'm thinking if it will be useful for black to expand with h4. And <laughs> apparently Grishuk it was because an answer. yeah, because Grishuk after bishop e8 he does start with yeah. h3 h4 here. So first h4 and then, in case of bishop f7, he can play rook d1. Yeah, that's uh, h4 move is is just uh, an important finesse because yeah, so he, he probably has to really stop black from expanding on the on the king side. So one by, by the by the way, could Jans have started with h4 himself? I mean, well, he probably could. Ah, but then maybe possibly it's rook e1. And then you don't have. And then you don't have not this maneuver with the bishop. Or no, maybe, that, or maybe or you maybe can, I, I yeah, have, because maybe. because there is always a check on c1. There is always a check on c1, and White has to go back. Bishop f7 played. Mm. Bishop f7 played, and Alexander uh, plays g2, g3. Which is sort of a draw for yeah, because after bishop d5, white takes on d5, takes on a6, and not rook d1, yeah? yeah. <laughs> that That's the funny part, that rook d1, the pin, doesn't really work because of uh, bishop takes and then mate on first rank. However, if queen d2 is played instead of... Will yeah, that, that work? Maybe that's a, that's that, a that's you a know that's a funny me. trap. Yeah. <laughs> so you might think with white, you might uh, sorry with black, you might get this kind of a bit relaxed. You would think, okay, now I'm taking on d5. He cannot uh, go rook d1 because of back rank, so he will probably take on d5, take on a6. We agree a draw, and then queen d2 and no move for black. It seems. I mean, you'll have to give the exchange no, with rook d8. The rook pawn structure is... Yeah. So you will have to go rook d8 in this case, rook d1, take on f3, but that, that should be lost, yeah? Because one takes, of these pawns... Takes, yeah. Oops. Takes on d6 well, and very white should, yeah, white should be able to win one of the king side po uh, queen side pawns. Yes, like g3. And what... What is the decision that Jan may come up with? Maybe rook c2. Yeah. I mean, like, but still, I, I thought that I'm kind of preventing rook d1, rook d1 because of queen c5, but then I realized that white can simply play queen e1 and black is yeah, you forced to go back. You probably cannot allow yourself to take on a2. Yeah, this d6 in this case runs the d pawn runs very. And quickly. you know that it may be a pos possible scenario. Of ah, so <laughs> like to repeat like that. Yeah. Uh, well, it really depends if white cannot, you know, cannot try improve this yeah. time. Like a2 rook, c rook c1, for example. Can you take a2? Well, you might. Yeah, I think yeah I, you, I you might. Yeah, since there is no yeah queen e5, and then if queens are traded, then rook d2, putting the rook behind the passed pawn would be be should be good enough for black. So All right, so yeah. rook c2 seems to be like a decent move. Shook to what else? The rook d8 as well. Yeah, rook d8, rook c1 is the line we were looking at, but perhaps black doesn't have to. Yeah, rook d if, if we play rook d8, rook c1, maybe black is not forced. I mean, obviously, he's not forced to take on d5. <laughs> if I. But, but you know, like, it, again, it becomes tricky because after playing bishop d5, there is rook d1. I, I saw that. No, but yeah. This can't play line rook doesn't really work. Of yeah, I, uh, I thought of bishop f3, but then yeah, yeah rook d6, rook d6, and there is a check on c1. I, yeah, I, rook I, c1 is fine. I suppose yeah. black, b black shouldn't allow ah, c5. Yeah, I think just rook c2. 
I mean, like shouldn't. rook g8. Okay, even if it is okay, it doesn't change the evaluation of position. I think like ninety percent of players would f firstly consider rook c2. So, so simply to keep yeah. the, to keep the rook on the c file. Yeah, and I believe Krishuk uh, um, has less than five minutes on his clock at that moment, and still 13 more moves to bridge the time control. So it might be a bit worrisome, this fact. Of it. So, so, well, if you are Jan Nepomnici in this position, you probably want to, you know, to try a little bit, to try to put some problems, try to, you know, to, to trick your opponent somehow. Then once again, th this is where you can blot the bishop d yeah. with, with bishop d5, queen d2. Mm -hmm. I, I do not expect Jan to blunder, to be honest. Rook c4. Okay, just another another possible way to sort of improve the position. Yeah, so yeah. rook d4 is rook some d4 kind of a threat. Rook d4 is a serious threat, yeah. So you have to... I suspect you have to go rook d1. And then, yeah, and then black... Uh, and rook d1 was played pretty fast. And then black might just, you know, just just wait. By the way, no, I was thinking about trying to be greedy and take the a2 pawn, like playing rook, rook a4, a4, queen d2, and queen somewhere. But I don't know exactly where. Because like queen d7 is still connected Wait, with some risk. Queen a3? Yes, I, I... Ah, so yeah. Attacking the bishop? And the no, but... Yeah, like this d6. I thought would work for black for some reason because I take on f3 there is some and then of after d7 rook takes a2 rook takes a2 and then ah oh wait but you have queen, queen d4 no, but queen d4 bishop g5 queen all d4, of a sudden yeah, queen d4 rook f2 would win as well uh, or, or, bishop, or, or, or bishop d5, yeah, both are good. Now, rook a2, you have to promote, I suppose. Yeah. It's like you, you, you just promote, rook T. takes, queen takes, or rook takes. Or rook takes. Yeah, but this position looks risk free for black, to be honest. I mean, is it just push the pawn, b4? B yeah, b4, I mean, b3. How do, you, how do you lose this with black? I mean, you never lose. Yeah, I think so. Uh, yeah, looks, looks fine. Uh, yeah, but my problem with this line was that after queen a3, if black plays, uh, sorry, if white plays king g2, or, or bishop g2, yeah, king g2, because now it doesn't seem that you can take on a2. White just trades, goes d6, and the pawn is not possible. To, I mean, you stop it by, by cost of your bishop. And then that means that after queen a3, yeah. you, you just have to go back to d6. Yeah, so... I was thinking about not being very active and just... Yeah, I mean, that that's what you can do. You can go rook a4, then after queen d2 go back to c4 and say, yeah, do we repeat the moves or, or I'll play before a5? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it, it might be that white also does ha doesn't have that much liberty, then may maybe he has to stop has to stop the black's advance, the ad advance of black pawns on, on, on the queen side. So the question is if uh, Jan will find some way to. Well, G5 was the was a try to play yeah. for for I for think an but attack. But we, yeah? but we declined it after. Takes takes queen, queen d2, d2, and it's not clear yeah what's what's good about this I mean, like, pawn, uh, pawn's push. Yeah, we pushed, but on not on, not on the side that it may be might be useful. Like king we f6. Are, we are forced to play queen f6 or queen h6. King h6. Yeah. Okay. Well. King f6. King f6. But yeah, I was I was thinking like of of this line, for instance, and and okay, in case of a check, you still have queen e5. But if rook e1, if white starts, yeah, check queen e5. I thought that that was kind I, of fine. Is it like is it fine? 
takes takes d6 rook c8 i thought on, first of all i'll play bishop b7 well that's should be fine rook d8 ah you're taking rook on d8 yeah, yeah just take take, take d6 and take a2 yeah yeah it's absolutely drawish in the end eliminating like all the uh all the forces but it it might have been still p uh, somewhat problematic for black this line so once again g5 is not something that is recommended because queen d2 king f6 and then for instance play rook e1 and what for do you need this? Your king, you, it, it's it's black king which is open. Yeah. yeah. Some queen b twos are no, possible. B bishop h five threat somewhere. Yeah, already. Yeah, like some bishop h five. If bishop takes, then rook e six. Yeah. So that's mm, not advisable. Yeah, that's feels like you know. Sometimes it happens in the open tournaments when you play against the lower rated uh, opponent. Kind of lower rated opponent. Almost forced to win. And you feel yourself under pressure to win at any cost, and then you come up with moves like g5. So let's let's destabilize the situation, and then ten moves later, you understand. Yeah, it was it was better to keep the position as is. So no direct way to make a draw, but as as we as we said, there is seemingly nothing wrong yeah, with with just shuffling around. Ju yeah. ju just playable. I mean. Not many resources for both sides, but nothing wrong at all. So what else we can advise there uh, for Alex and Wait a sec. Uh, how about? Well, it, it, it's a weird-looking move, but how about b4 yes, I for black? Because the point was, at least the point I was I was thinking of, was okay, that rook c3, rook, c3, rook, c3, rook, a3. rook a3 is sort of a threat. <laughs> Just winning a queen. Yeah, so all of a sudden this queen is getting trapped. But it seems that white can go bishop e2 in this case. Yeah, also I'm thinking about some very, very solid... But rook b1. Rook b1. Ah, so that Rook c3, you get king g2, and like you take on f3. Yeah, in this case, yeah, maybe you go bishop g2. Just the way, yeah, yeah. Th that's the line we are discussing. Rook c3, and then king g2 might prove to be dangerous because of an exchange sacrifice, and then bishop d5, and and you kind of don't, don't like to go with your yeah. king in the open, but you can go bishop bishop g2, right? And it seems once again. I mean, th this probably should be a draw once again. Rook a3, queen yeah, takes, queen takes, rook takes, rook a2, and then rook d2, the next move. Should be, normally should be a draw. But once again, maybe there is no reason for but black may to may do yeah, it. Yeah, may maybe w black can wait, like, for a couple of moves after rook b1, try to improve. Uh, maybe, now, maybe now g5 on the king said, like, we restricted the queen. Ah, so the queen is not coming back, yeah. Rook d4 might be useful, yeah, g5 might be interesting. Move. Jan has played rook c2, so he first... Well, that, that's a bit strange, to be honest, because remember we were looking at rook c2 at once, so he yeah. first... But, okay, well, like... Maybe he's trying to say you are in the sort of a tsuk swan, make a move. And also, like, rook of f1 was protecting f2 pawn, but now he sees some now threats connected yeah? with this... Bishop e4, an attempt to, you know... Yeah, but it's. I think it's... Uh, very easy to blunder something on the time trouble in time trouble in this exact position because like uh, there is a lot of finesses and yeah at some point it might turn out to be yeah so now like getting the rook to e5 does it really help no the answer is no you can make a draw Rook C4. Go rook c4 and then go back. I think Jan. Yeah, will by try. that point, yeah, by he that should. point, it feels that Black is the one who should, at least, should avoid the immediate repetition. It's clear. I mean, the position is, at least, I mean, at the very least, is not dangerous for Black, right? So I mean, maybe that I can much try I can say. B2. And the second factor is, of course, the time trouble for Alexander yeah. Krishuk. So if would this would be past move 40, then we could expect that 
the repetition. Jan yeah. will repeat the moves and say, okay, you know, I comfortably yeah. achieve a draw with white, uh, with black, and let me try with white tomorrow. But yeah, but taking into account the time factor, I believe he has to try to play. So is rook, rook b2, b2 is, there, is there real try to rook c8? Rook back to c8. Seems to me that Grishuk just doesn't understand the purpose of rook c8. Absolutely, and uh, and this is the purpose of rook c8, uh, that your opponent doesn't understand. Yeah, but Grishuk doesn't seem to be impressed. So, so, he, so he'll just bishop f3 or bishop... He'll just play... Wait a sec, let's see where, where the bishop is going. Well, he is somewhat puzzled. Three minutes left. Three minutes left. Bishop... Huh. G2. G2, f3... G2 looks at the first glance more or less it's like safer yeah you safer bishop g2 right bishop g2 but now but uh, maybe it's like some kind of psychological trick like we now we know that Krishuk is fine with with agreeing a draw, yeah. and now he can start like rook c2, bishop of bishop e4, rook b2 again. I mean, not again, but uh, the line that we were. I mean, I've tried yeah, to rook b2 evaluate. Well, the thing is, it's yes, not clear what what the what the threat is. So yeah, but like okay, m move is the bishop, whatever bishop back to g2. Yeah, so at least the rook and is not then hanging. you can try once again. You can try those lines: queen c5, yeah. Yeah, but like maybe again, again like queen, queen c5, e1, queen e1, or uh, even rook d2 as well. And rook d2, rook, rook queen d2, c1, that was sorry, queen yeah. c1 check. Yeah, so queen e1, and then once again the point is that you can't take a2 because d pawn is running. The d pawn, yeah, it's like yeah. d6, and it is sufficient. <laughs> yeah, so. A bit not enough resources in like in fair battle. So so he, uh, Jan now he has to come up with some trick with some I don't know, uh, like mixing those moves in the way that Krishuk will 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 go wrong. Yeah, simply. we can expect something peculiar. Oh, wait, before here, hoping for Bishop of White, three, rook three. <laughs> yeah, for Bishop yeah, so three. Yeah, so this is a nice Yeah, I mean at least it's it's. It's kind of a joke, but yeah, but this way finally, yeah, is trapped. I mean, fi or, or finally, White blundered white something. Yeah, give up a bishop. Rook, rook a3 is coming. Yeah, but like before, I, mean, I was trying to the understand what's wrong with bishop f1. Bishop f1 there. attacking a6. Uh, perhaps nothing's wrong. Like maybe ah, still some tricks. Maybe. Yeah, rook c5. My problem is that rook c5 runs into queen b4, and yeah. I don't even have any. Yeah, but can I take a bishop? With the bishop on a6 rook after a8. rook c2. I mean, uh, rook c2 you take with the bishop, yeah. you probably can. Ah, uh, so the point is that it, it might be somewhat dangerous for black to enter this one, yeah? It will just take on a on a6. Yep. Yeah, can't, can't argue with this one. Rook c7, so it keeps hovering around. Uh, rook c7 can go to d7 if he wants. Bishop, yeah, bishop f3. f3. Just instantly. Rook c4. It's like, and <laughs> I'm wondering looks like if he Black has is this playing for the Tsukzwang. Oh, well, we had this position with Black to move, and th this was the yes. moment where Jan went to c2. Bishop e4 to c8. But yeah. all of a sudden, maybe it is very, very deep, but I started to realize the idea. I mean, like now, if I s play b4... Bishop f1? Yeah, the bishop f1 is the only move. I mean, like, we are restricting white's possibilities. But maybe... But looks sufficient. Yeah, maybe there is... Could be the only move, but the sufficient Only but one. enough, yeah. Once again, not clear where, where the rook is going. As it might be... No, it might be that black actually has some difficulties equalizing because a6 pawn is hanging. 
Yeah, okay, well, looks like we have to play rook c3, queen takes a6. Mm -hmm. And I thought about queen c5 there. Queen c5, With some threat, the threat to being to take on g3. Rook g3. But uh, it still remains unclear. I mean, like, looks like white shouldn't play d6 because of rook g3, but... Rook g3 and then bishop g2, yeah, bishop right? Bishop g2 and... And that, that's very, very, you know, very messy because, yeah, almost... Ah, wait, bishop d5 doesn't really work, yeah? You just take with the... Rook. Yeah, I can play bishop d5. When you take with the rook, I take on g2 and, and I claim this to be a perpetual check. Yeah, rook takes, well, a lot of mutual pins, yeah? Rook takes, king takes, queen yeah, d5 might be a draw. should be... Should be a draw, right? Because I'm giving checks all the time, and then if you kind of try to use the queen to protect the king, then d6, d6 will is be hanging. hanging. Yeah, so that once again should be. Yeah, but this is the line where black is the side who makes the draw. So yeah, so once again, it's it's a bit illogical, right? Because before that, Jan could repeat any any time he wants. And but I I think at that moment Grishuk has just like less than two minutes, probably. Ah, but ah, yeah. so well, like bishop yeah, g2. Yeah, bishop g2, he has played. Yeah. to move. Yeah. Jan, of course, has a lot of time at his disposal. Uh, so we still failed to find the way to improve, right? Sort of. Uh, there is always this bishop f1 idea whenever Black tries to move the b pawn forward. Which once again brings me back to the uh, to thought that maybe Black shouldn't allow Queen a5 early on. Because now at least this, I mean, it's kind of a comfortable square for this Queen, so it causes a lot of inconvenience for Black. If there would be any way to trade the queens and not to allow the d pawn to go too far then that that would be the other way for black to try to play for a win right but for that yeah. I, I don't know what has to happen well. and, and a move like king g8 seems to be just a waiting move let's be honest it, it doesn't improve black's position okay well wh what is the point if we just continue playing bishop f3, bishop f3. I mean, he's trying once again to create the, this moment where he would play rook c3 and, you know, rook c3, rook a3. But you have to start with b4, of course, for that, right? I don't see it, honestly. Simply don't see it. Any... I was thinking wait, about the plan g5, to... h4? This shouldn't work, but it's like I'm trying to get the logic behind King G8. I was thinking about some peculiar, peculiar plans, in spirit of uh, Akiba Rubinstein playing King F8 and Queen King E6, King E7, King G7. But looks uh, like it's a bit risky in this kind of position. Well, the thing is, once again, yeah, I was thinking of something similar, but uh, in fact, after King F8. White queen is not, uh, say, it's not better on a5, but it's not bound to be there. So after king f8, I can Im I can just play queen d2. Yeah, well. You know, threatening some queen h6s. Like, for instance, this happens, and I, yeah, here, can go there, uh, there, and then with the idea to go to h6, right? King e7, queen h6, then rook e1. So once again, yeah, maybe. if white would promise to move with the bishop only, right? Then then we probably wouldn't mind to get the king to d7 and then, I don't know, threaten but to... But while the king gets to d7, the, like, I can't say normally, but uh, it seems to me that there are, no, there are no more threats connected with taking on d5 because the d-file will open yeah, and yeah. everything is pinned. That's not what Black wants to have on the board. Bishop f3. Bishop f3, so a couple of minutes once again. A uh, couple of minutes left for Grishuk. Jan, of course, has a lot of time, so perhaps the right moment to spend it. Uh, crazy attacks with g5. 
takes an h4. It's hard to see if black creates any threats by, by doing this, right? Like if once again if white changes his mind and goes like queen e1. Yep. So it could have been the logic behind king g uh, king g8, so that when white takes on f6 it's not like not, it's not, it's not a extra check. Checks, yeah. Yeah. It's not a check, but it's both kings which are getting exposed in this case. Having the king around b7, a7. <laughs> then possibly black would be uh, able to go g5 h4 but this is not happening this king will not get there yeah, th once again one of those games that uh, when you would be later on after the game is finished when you'll be checking the text and raw text without any with a time spent and everything, you might think, oh, okay, that was a boring game, right? That's like nothing was happening in the opening, somewhat uh, dry position, they kept moving here yeah. and there, and then agreed to draw, but in fact, you can, if you follow it live, you can feel a great tension here, and ex exactly the fact that Krishuk spent such a lot of time on those seemingly quiet moves, so uh, I, I'm really interested to listen to his interview afterwards. I mean, I suppose the, if the game finishes in a draw, and, and yeah, he will explain. Yeah, what because was we never expect Grishuk wasting time for nothing. Yeah, absolutely. And and those who follow our, bro our coverage, I mean, I believe whenever he would come up with an interview, he has shown, I mean, how much, yeah. in fact, he he's able to calculate during yeah, like the game. Yeah, like tons of lines and. Every single, sometimes, yeah, like like a quiet move has its uh, explanation. And I have pointed out for myself that Grushuk very r rarely plays intuitively. I mean, he's so trying to, to calculate, yeah, to calculate and know the exact evaluation of position. Well, his last moves though, Bishop F3 and then Bishop G2 and then Bishop F3. Okay, I mean. Like he understands that there is nothing in this position. So he's he's simply for waiting him to, to play and win. But yeah, he's simply waiting to reach move fourteen. So he kind of his his game is over. He thinks right. So he's ready to to agree a draw any time. Jan Nepomniši will will be willing to do so and go to the next game. Get the game tomorrow where he will be playing black. Speaking of once again, <laughs> I mean, speaking of tomorrow's game and the openings, it really, really depends. I mean, on players, uh, on Grishuk's mood first of all, I would say, because Jan is very likely to open with one e4. That's yeah. what he was doing in this tournament. That's what he usually does. And Grishuk recently started has to has play Sveshnikov, yes, right? Sveshnikov. Usually he plays neither for an e5 first. Yeah, e5 is always an option. So hard to say what exactly we will we'll see tomorrow. Then once again, if one e5 is played, then it can be Rui Lopez, it can be Joko Piano, and it can be the opening that we haven't seen in I our tournament. Scotch. Yeah, the Scotch, yeah, the Scotch, because even though it's fairly deeply analyzed and most of those top players they know the lines which are safe for black but still I believe Jan is one of the few players who plays this coach from time to time and gets good results with it but before going to this next game this game has to be resolved still I believe Jan haven't uh, haven't gave up just yet on trying to pull some yeah. problems. Move 33 though, so it's less and less moves after which another half an hour will be added to both players' clock. King G7? King H7. H7, some triangles. Some triangles with the king. Well, 
it's difficult to yeah difficult to understand and i believe it, it as well to is to figure out what is the difference i mean yeah, the conceptual what position, difference what position he's trying to achieve you know what position he it's definitely that he's looking for something for some particular position or maybe he just playing on nerves Yeah, being Grishuk, it, it's once again, it's not so much time there. Well, three and a half minutes, in fact. I mean, it's not that terrible. But, yeah, do you really spend time here to figure out what your opponent wants? Well, a little bit, I would say. So you you do not really spend, like, three uh, out of your three and a half minutes in order to understand what does King H7 mean. You just probably play Bishop G2. That's that's what he was or doing. King G two. Uh, he's planning to go with the king. Yeah. He's planning to go with the yes, king. Yes, but uh, now I'm trying to understand why Grishuk has changed his mind. I mean, while he was repeating yeah. his bishop. After King G two, there was. Yeah. Now there might be some tricks. Look, before. And now d5 falls with check. Yeah, I mean, that, that was my problem. That, yeah, king on g2 runs into check. So bishop e2, that's what we were doing. Maybe there's still nothing. Or maybe he's just provoking. Uh, so in case of rook c5, queen b4 Before. still works. Bishop f3, king g1. King g1. Queen, queen c6. c6. Yeah, he unpins with queen c6. Yeah, well, but... Yes, like black is fine, but 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 like not I, I, better. I, I, yeah. I can take bishop a6, I think. Not better, right? Somewhere, maybe there. Bishop a6. Uh, well, there is bishop h1, and you go back, yeah. Yeah. Bishop a6. Yeah. So the bishop cannot be taken because the rook is hanging. And, and also another tactical trick is to play queen b7 after bishop h1. Ah, well, that that that's a that's a nice one. Queen b7 or bishop b7, yeah. Yeah, maybe this, yeah. this, this, and takes and and the check. I'm playing with an extra this pawn. This one, yeah. I mean, probably a draw, but still, it's black who has to be careful. Right. Once again, it's <laughs> unlikely to happen. So King G2 played. Uh, one, one minute eleven spent on King G2. Still above three minutes. Time for Alexander Grishuk, 46 left for Jan Nepomnichin. Well, but there should be some way to use to use the fact that the king is on g2. What happens? What happens in in case of rook c5? Ah well, nothing happens. Still queen b4. Queen b4. Still queen b4. You you cannot take. Yeah, there's just okay. You can go yeah, rook c6 back and then. For for some reason, I thought you can take here, but no, but, but no, it's just bishop takes. It's bishop takes and yeah, you cannot take back. So rook c5 is not not a great idea. Well. So I'm trying to <laughs> figure out the difference between king being on g7 and h7. Maybe not easy. I mean, like if we play g5 there. Yeah, well, there g5 might make sense. Like yeah, so that takes takes. Well, I can say that there is more or less sense, but now like takes, if our takes. king is on h7 and white pl have played king g2, which probably has some drawbacks because g4 in some lines may be a threat yeah here at least g4 is a threat here at least g4 is a threat but once again if like if if we naively play queen d2 i mean allowing g4 bishop e2 still not clear why it is such a such a terribly bad position for for white, nothing, maybe, no, maybe, nothing. Yeah. Maybe it can be just nothing happen. Yeah, nothing happens. So rook c5 here, and you are in time to give a check. Yeah, yeah check and bishop e4. Very next move, or maybe not. Or maybe yeah, I mean, first of all, let's see where the king yeah. is going. Yeah, and it's not so clear. Maybe just yeah, you probably go to h8, right? But it, it's it's not that it's a nice square to go, but to allow queen g5 is even worse. 
Yeah, just so yeah, no, no perhaps G five was never an idea. The feeling is like G five was even there. Yeah, it was never an idea for Jan and but otherwise, yeah, once again it's not clear. Yeah, well it it's a really uh lack lucky I would say for, for White that he always has in case of b4, he always has bishop to this f1, a6 diagonal move, so like bishop e2 in our case. Because otherwise, it might have been problematic if b4, rook c3 comes, trapping the queen. If there, is there any suspicious f5? <laughs> f5 and, and then f4. Yeah, once again. Like, well, I, I, mm, so I didn't come up with conclusion. I mean, like trading f f pawns is in favor of whom? Yeah, well, you open the second rank. Maybe, maybe you can make an argument that this is this is useful for this is useful for black. But once again, f5 compromises your structure well quite a bit. So yep. uh, white once again can return to d2. It's like queen d2, f4, and then play something. Yeah, I mean, I mean, uh, now I'm trying to reach the g3 pawn, like, then uh, b4 and rook and c3. And putting the rook yeah. on c3 so that g3 will be weak. Yeah. Uh, f5 played, so, bravo. F5, and yeah, I do agree that being in a bit of a time trouble, it's not such an easy move to react to. Not such an easy move to react to. Have he had the bishop on g2? He would have been able yeah. to go f4, f4, which would block the king side completely. Yeah, then rook d2 and just make some kind of okay, a fortress. Okay, queen d2, that's the most natural reaction, so being short on time, that that's what you do. So let's see what happens when Jan's gonna play f4. Because I believe he will. He has to play it. Yeah, I believe he will. As it's soon as possible. No, what? No, B4. B4. So b <laughs> from the other wing. Yeah. So B4 followed by A5 followed by putting the rook on C3. Could it be that Grishu completely missed the plan connected with F5? Well, it might have been. Of course, so like being in a time trouble means that. You wouldn't see as many as you could if you had more time. Uh, yeah, so what what to do now? Well, there is... Like Bishop E2. There is a funny move. There is Queen E2. There is Queen... Ah, no, but I'm not attacking. For some reason I thought I'm attacking A6 pawn. I, I'm, I'm used to this thought that I'm attacking A6 pawn, but it is protected now. No, so Queen E2 doesn't, doesn't really make... Well, it does make some sense. But yeah, well, I may not not much. Continue with Queen E3, yeah, Queen E3 okay. is more or less Queen E3. Fine. So now, like uh, Grushuk's main idea is to play maybe Queen A7 and trying to yeah Queen A7 and maybe in some positions Rook E1, Rook E7 if he is given a chance. Well, like if F5 has an only drawback, that E5 square now is yeah potentially White yeah. can can get yeah. to to E5 square. Uh, by the way, f4 in this position. Uh, what's white react? White's reaction has to be because mm, I really don't want to take on f4. Then it yeah. might be still fine, but the feeling is like it's wrong. Yeah, like black right. Take uh, black's with gonna rook. take with the rook, and then h4 is hanging, and in many many positions there will be this threat of taking on f4. Yeah, like maybe we can. Yeah, queen a7 almost, almost to the same positions, but yeah, okay. but uh, with slightly queen better pawn structure. Yeah, but then rook, rook back to c7 is the other option. Yeah, well, like then you centralize, then well, you black take. takes on g3, goes rook c2, check. You go rook d2 and yeah, or rook c3, or for rook example. c3, not not c2 but c3. Then trying to say that there are some. I'm not sure how how serious. Yeah, but well, maybe even white rook, rookie one is fine. Yeah, why, uh, how serious white's problems are. Rookie one, there is no sacrifice on f3, and otherwise rookie five might be like. No, but well, uh, now I'm blundering. Rook c2 check. Rook c2, and there is no rook e2. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So perhaps first you have to leave the rook to second rank. 
Yeah, playing rook like d2. Here, yeah, first after rook c3 to go rook d2 so that everything is covered and in case of possible a5 for instance you now go you go queen a7 yeah queen a7 as well but i thought rook e2 or rook f2 yeah. was possible now once again yeah it's like playing f4 it weakens both kings it's not that yeah you open up white king for free it also kind of softens a bit the defense of of black's king as well so but grishuk now is not suffering as hardly as he did like 10 moves before because like he has three minutes for three moves yeah four four moves yeah yeah the, four the, moves, that's yeah. move 36 he has played so the question is uh once again if we come back to now, now we know what Jan was trying to achieve, right? I mean, he was trying. He he wanted to play a five in some positions. So I'm I'm just wondering, for instance, over here, did he really pick up the best moment to go a five? Because okay, I mean, here here five is feels a bit premature, right? Then after rook c four, rook d one. Yeah, because uh, it's not that I don't like the position, but the fact that he spent few moves and allowed Grishuk to get closer to the time control. Yes, and so uh, maybe with the king on g1, f5, f4 threat would be more powerful because like g3 yeah, f4 is, it, is, with a is not hanging. Kind of with a tempo, yeah. yes. So, so w the moment you play f4, kind of adds additional pressure on g3. So queen e3. What else can he do? Yeah, as you pointed out, a5 is met with queen a7. Yep. Strangely, it might turn to be that king, king, g8. king, king, like king g8, king g7, just to protect the bishop. Yeah, the d5 pawn you can never ever take. That's the that's the problem. Like I, I, I keep thinking of uh, say, you're going rook <laughs> more, c5. More, yeah. more, moreover, playing f6, f5 means that I'll never take d5 pawn. Yeah. All right. Uh, what was the what was the idea behind all those pawn moves? And once again, don't get us wrong. I believe black is perfectly fine. He he shouldn't be. It shouldn't be worse in any of those lines. Just that it's clear. Yeah, that black already. I mean, yet <laughs> they did something wrong. I mean, uh, obviously they are trying. Probably the evaluation is still around equal, but. Rook, rook c7. Back to c7. In order to play rook e7, perhaps? Yes, but what is the sense? Yeah, I, that, I, that I, feels saw that, I saw that the rook on c file can be more useful on e file because like c3, c2, c4 squares are... Okay, I can... I hardly... I hardly find an explanation of rook c7. What white is supposed to lead? Well... Something that I don't like that after rook c1 black takes takes on d5 and then f3 is hanging with a check. Yeah. Because otherwise I I, I would probably go rook c1 mm, with yeah, the idea to to play rook c6. Well, yeah. It just doesn't work on the spot. Yeah, it doesn't work. Yeah, you you just take take d5. So that's why I was thinking so maybe I'm moving the king in this position. Yeah, bishop d5. That that, that, that just that's just bad. One. It's just bad. Okay, maybe it's still like. Yeah, who knows? Yeah. I mean, with a black king being that weak, it could be that white yeah, it, is... It can be lost, because like, white black will white, play yeah. e5, and then king will transfer to, ah, so you'll to the a pawn, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, so rook c1. No, rook c1 is not working, Rook to d3. Yeah, rook d3. That's, that's fine. Rook to d3, protecting the third and, ring. And maybe now, like... Jan will try to push the queenside pawns, like rook ah, on c7. That, that like a7 is protected, yeah. The pawns will be supported from the b7 square. Ah, so you can go a5. a5 yeah. 
It's um, probably Jan's main idea. Well, it is it is annoying. Yeah, I have to agree. It is annoying. But I mean, now I can't understand the sense of f5. I mean, like, if the pawn would be on f6, it wouldn't be. Ah, could he could he do the same yeah, without? Yeah, the same without yeah because f5. it doesn't hurt really. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't hurt to have the pawn on f6. So that's mm, feels a bit illogical, really. Yeah, yeah, it's like f5. The idea of f5 is clear. You want to play f4, right? And then. Turns out that you push the pawn to f5 and then simply move in the queen side. And maybe it forced white to go yeah, back because a5. before that the queen was the queen was on, on a5, a5 so, yeah. so it was difficult for Grishuk to, uh, sorry, difficult for Nepomuchi to you know to extract this queen from a5. And so a5, a3, a3, is a an immediate reply. So kind of stopping black from advancing, right? Uh, and obviously, trading a pair of pawns will ah, so that simplify. That, that that's game over. Yeah, no, for, is, if bishop white. a3, rook a3, bishop d5, white captures on on a5. And then yeah, he's he's fine there. Feels like yeah. So take on a5, take on a3, queen f3, queen c6, just mm -hmm. rook d5, rook d7. <laughs> uh, wait, if rook e7 first. In this position, well, I can play queen d2, I think. Ah, so that b a3 you can take on a5, right? I, 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 I thought I can. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so well, perhaps that that's uh, what Grishuk spent his time on, uh, on like previous move, so that to make sure that a3 actually does work. And that's a clever thing to do because otherwise black would be would keep pushing his pawns like yeah. a four and possibly a three in some moment, or b three b takes and then a three. And after after the opening, the the game looks very natural. I mean, like why didn't receive anything? Yeah, why didn't get anything? Then it was a very open. important moment to solidify and uh, put the pieces on the right squares. Jan understood that. He can try to to play to play chess a, at least, yeah. To play for a win, yeah. But but n nothing, yeah, yeah, nothing major was happening. It, it feels like no missed opportunities for the players. Yeah, so might be one of those correct games from start to finish, which some people the find boring to watch. Yeah. So if rook c two, then again I play queen e seven probably. You can, yeah. I thought there may be some kind of yeah. That's a yeah. kind of funny line that yeah, like that I, I queen c five yeah, yeah, if queen takes queen king h six king h six no checks yeah so like but at the same white, white two h three maybe yeah two h three but I think it doesn't change the position yeah, so much like queen h three still like queen f two and queen perpetual two and that, that's a perpetual yeah. That's a funny line, but the probably the problem that after queen c5, also queen takes c5 should be considered. Yeah, queen c5. It's yeah, but like <laughs> you know, like it was my first intention. I I realized queen that c5. queen f7 doesn't win the game. Takes takes and d6. I don't believe black can be better in this one. No, with, just with white pawn on d7. No, I think it's just equal. Once again, yeah, it's like rook to c8. But you know, like by the way, rook c8. The question is, if you go d7 here, d7 you probably do. Yeah, take on. Yeah, I think you can four. take and play bishop d1. I think at least. Yeah, and I mean, if you want to draw, you yeah. you probably hold no matter what. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I thought that bishop c6 is fine as well. Yeah, you go to c6, yeah, b3, c6. and then just just play rook d2. Yeah, well, just the just king, a draw. Both kings are coming to the center. Yeah, it should be a draw. Uh, right, so... Another key moment, how to react to a2, a3. One more time, after rook e7 we said... Queen d2? Queen d2 is possible, yeah. Aha, so if I take on a3 first... 
and then play rook e seven. Yeah, but then then once again, then you have like variety of squares. Oh yeah, like queen d four. Oh, no, 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 but no. the rook is saying oh, that yeah. was the but queen d three. Queen d three or, or queen c three attacking. Queen c three. Uh, yeah, like yeah, bishop, bishop still d5 fine. I take bishop d5, a5 you just any take piece. on a5 and with any piece. probably with the rook again. Yeah. Yeah. Why, to, why to change anything? Yeah, you just take with the rook and that's that draw. Yeah, a3. What else? You can put the rook behind the past pawn, the rook b7, and then pretend that. Yeah, but you don't even want to play b3. So it's really hard. But maybe you're trying to play for Zugzwang. The rook b3. As I am taking on b4. A takes, a takes. Then maybe this is the moment to move the queen away. Right? Oh, so the king. The king, like yeah, like too. Yeah, so, so that in those various lines, d5 is not hanging with the check. So for instance, to go king h2. Just a draw. Once again. Yeah. Should be should be equalish. Yeah, the fact is that there was no trouble whatsoever for Jan, so he had Well, I I'm not even not even sure if he was surprised in any way with this lines with this line. I think he just knows his Grimfel lines <laughs> as properly as we can even imagine. Yeah, well, uh, so which brings me to the interesting conclusion that in fact Wojtaszek, despite the despite the fact that the line he was playing looked absolutely harmless, he, he was closer to you know to put some opening problems yeah. to Jan Nepomniczy compared to this, which is perhaps the the more principal and objectively stronger line, but. Uh, that Grisha played, but it seems that you cannot really su surprise Jan in this one. Right, so half an hour left, and what's uh, what's more important, two moves left for Alexander Grisha, one of them being a three takes before, <laughs> like very, very next couple of moves. Yeah. One of them will be a takes before, and then looks like if there were any problems for White, now we can't see any. can't see them any longer. So I won't be surprised if Jan will force a draw in some way. And there should be tons of ways to do so. Okay, well like Ruby seven. Eight takes eight takes, eight, eight takes. takes and I think we said King H two, right? Yeah, or Queen G one. Yeah, I think it change doesn't change almost, much almost yeah. nothing yeah. doesn't change much black can't even go b3 yeah because, because it's just take yeah b3 rook takes yeah and the, the d5 pawn is, pawn is protected and this is this is now becomes playable for white <laughs> yeah but if you give the pawn for free or maybe just much obvious. better yeah yeah, well, like King H. I mean, he he can he can just shuffle with the king, King G8, King. You know. <laughs> well, actually, you probably leave the rook to B6 in this case. I mean, why would you need the rook to be on B7? So you might leave the rook, King G2. Wait, the moment you played King, ah no, nothing, nothing. Queen B8. Yeah, no, it's B. Ah, well, yeah, don't want to allow Queen E7. I don't want to allow Queen E7. So, so most likely we will see s some trades and yeah, but draw green. I can't really can't really imagine what you exchange. I mean, if you exchange one pair of pieces, uh, how do you keep the game going, right? So the no the ideas. very first exchange me probably means that there is absolutely nothing. It's like 
we were talking of exchanging the queens. And, and once again, with rook on b7, and let's say if white for some reason has to switch to like post passive blockade of the b pawn, then maybe black can get somewhere. But you can't. You don't have let's so say a power to, to force to do white to. To go make rook a b3 for passive instance. blockade, we have to make a threat of playing b4, b3. Yeah, That's and so far we failed to do that. Now, don't know what, what has to be done. And I think Jan smiled, said that. Yeah. So I think he's in some kind of, you know, inner dialogue with himself. Yeah. Possibly, kind of ironically thinking of his, you know, of his triangle he yeah, made yeah, yeah, with, yeah, with, yeah. with the rooks and in, with his rook and the king. So, I have some doubts that the draw offer me. Ah, so he might he might just play a move. You mean yeah. might just play a move and offer a draw? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I think you normally still you, you you wait for your opponent to get to the time control and then. Because, like, usually and ironically, it happens that during the time trouble, the player who is in the time trouble may like, find the all proper moves, and so all of a sudden, like on move forty, just blunder a piece, which yeah, <laughs> and which happened has yeah, happened many, with many myself. Times, yeah, yeah. Uh, that move forty is one thing. Then the other thing is just like right after the time control. Did you notice that? That okay on yes, move forty one. Yeah. So so you get an increment, and then. You are relaxed. Yeah. Okay. I accomplished the task. Yeah, so you, you know? just lose and the that concentration. And very often, the, it happens that the move you make after the time control, and you spend time on it, this move. It's not like you make it a tempo. Yeah. You spend time, and then then. B takes a three ca comes along with a draw offer. So indeed, there was not much to play on in this game. I suspect that after rook a three, bishop d five was the move. Yeah, uh, Jan she was thinking about. Uh, well, <laughs> not the, pardon, so not the sharpest game, not the perhaps not the most exciting game, but it was tense. It was really tense. It, it felt when when Alexander was spending a lot of time, and the tension in this match needs to build up. So today was already, I mean, a pressure on both players. So tomorrow with colors reversed, Jan. I would say is in a somewhat more comfortable situation, so he will have white pieces, and I believe recently Jan Nepomniši picked up this uh, well, you know, the habit to play without risk. I mean, before that, I mean, I I, I would go and say that Jan's play style usually is very sharp. I mean, he, he plays chess in a very sharp in manner. A very brilliant, yeah, like brilliant way, yeah. So sometimes sacrificing, sometimes, you know, even like not 100% sound sacrifices and this and that and, and like second-rate opening lines. But recently he has found this ability to play uh, for a win, to pose, pose problems practically yeah. without taking any additional risk. So tomorrow I expect one of those games. So he will be it, the it one. It, sh it should be more calm that it used to be like in zeros when Jan played some aggressive openings with white. Like, like a central opening, some <laughs> di di different openings which can be risky. Yeah, yeah once even again. For white. So, so he will not, I believe, will not take additional risk, but he will try. I mean, yeah. anyone in, in his situation would. He will try to play for a win with white, and once again, before tomorrow's broadcast, we probably will try to figure out who has the better score in Rapid and Blitz, because overall, as we said, Grishuk is leading plus one. They've played 41 games, most of them in Rapid and Blitz. So it's really interesting how the dynamic of those two playing in shorter time controls, because after today's draw, well, there is a game tomorrow, but the probability of a tiebreak, I would say, is above 50%. Uh, right, so... Mm, anything else we can say about this game? Yeah, I'm, I'm still puzzled what uh, the preparation was, what uh, was... 
What was the idea of Alexander Grisha going for for this particular line? Because yeah, I think the only thing that we can admit that uh, probably it wasn't necessary to even defend because Grishuk was the side who was defending and he could just uh, have he could safely play like um, yeah if we can have the board so we could yeah we could show something yeah King G7 yeah I think we were considering mm. move D6 yeah we've, the we've, we've agreed that after D6 it's actually black who has to be somewhat uh, precise yeah. and draw seems to be a very likely outcome in this case. Yeah, right? because uh, C uh, d6 we the thought the yeah, only black has to take the pawn structure. takes rook e8 and queen a3, right? Yeah, while black and play. then pla black plays. That that's at least what we thought. Queen takes a7, bishop c6, and then rook e7 on a on a very next move. Uh, black would be quite solid in this case. So. Yeah. So, yeah. But this just an absolute equal. But in the game, it was like, uh, yeah. In the game, Alexander got into somewhat worse position. That that's uh, the argument we are trying to make. So, after he has taken on f6, right, and uh, Black was able to b block the d pawn with queen d6, and perhaps once again one of those positions where computer will say equal, but white, uh, w we had seen it in the game. Later on, he was moving the bishop, bishop g2, bishop f3, like five moves in a row. And from human perspective, it's like you give your opponent a chance to do more or less whatever he wants. And this is not equal, at least in our perception. Right? This is not equal. It's black is trying and white is holding the position. He had yeah. no problem to hold, though. And considering the factor of it being in time trouble, of course, uh, Grishuk had to be very very patient and what's that's what he did yeah that's what he did he is an expert playing on <laughs> very <laughs> limited time but once again if you ask him i believe he's gonna say he would prefer not to the only thing that we can ask him just uh, how he does it i mean like how he can just very calmly uh, play on uh, play on 30 position, seconds, yeah. yeah. Play on 30 seconds and uh, find all those best moves. I believe this will be one of the questions that we he will be asked during the interview. We will come back after the interview with the players just to say goodbye. So stay tuned. We'll come back after the interview. So uh, we are in the press center with Alexander Grishuk and Jan Nepomnishi. The first game of the final match is drawn. So Alexander, you were playing with white. Uh, uh, you opted for a rare, quite a rare line with uh, exchange sacrifice. So please tell us, do you think you surprised your opponent with this? Surprised, uh, yes, it was an opening catastrophe for me. Uh, I mean. Um, not just he played a very good line, but also it's, it's like it seemed like it was the only thing he was preparing for. I don't know why, but and also even 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 in this position with exchange down, it's okay for black, of course. But and there are like ten normal ways to play for him, but at least everywhere white has you know easy play initiative. I mean it's no advantage, but at least but this. Castle queen b6 and queen c3 bishop d7 it somehow escaped my attention and then I just yeah there must be a way to equalize but uh, I didn't find it. and then it was a terrible position but somehow I managed to set up uh, a defense with this h4 g3 at least now I don't have back rank problems mm -hmm. and queen on a5 stops because if pawns get to b4 a5 then I thought it just can become very bad, and uh, yeah, somehow I managed to defend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Jan, you are in a good spirit, so please tell us what's the reason for this. There is no reason to be in a good spirit because, well, um, I believe it's more or less drawish line, and uh, somehow I have prepared this line for one of the previous matches. Here. Um, because yes, here mm -hmm. because uh, well, uh, I think Andrekin played uh, this way against me at the Russian Super Final, and well, it was some. Uh, some, ano some another move, maybe I played bishop g4, but I mean, I think maybe knight c6 is just equalizing. The position is equal, I think, until uh, e takes f6. After this, 
it could be somewhat suspicious for White because the structure is not mm -hmm. so pleasant and, you know, uh, Sasha was in time trouble, but, uh, well, clearly I should have opted for G5 or maybe a 5F4, but I didn't really find a good addition. Um, I, I bet if maybe instead of B4 I could try F4. So yeah, but then G4, yeah, that, that's a problem. Maybe then takes takes and a free check, but I wasn't very sure about it. So may, may, maybe, but uh, once again, um, clearly Black's play should be, should, should have been improved somehow, but uh, well, I m maybe basically this, with this setup with G3 and H4 is the only chance to you know to hold the position because otherwise, I mean, it's unpleasant. I going to play H4 on my own or maybe even G5. So it was very precise from uh, Sasha. So well, uh, maybe Rook C2 instead of Rook C4. So Rook C4 just lots of tempo. After Rook C2, I um, you know I didn't play this because of some move like Bishop D1, Rook C4, and Bishop B3, and they thought maybe this setup is good, but uh, you know. Taking uh, into account that okay, my general idea is to open uh, the king side. Yeah, you know, with f5 or four or something. Maybe you know, bishop on b3 is not a thing I should be afraid of. Yeah. So. And uh, always uh, I had this positional idea to play b4 and cut the queen on e5 completely out of play. And with bishop on b3, probably it's um, some kind of a trouble for white because you know, once you play bishop b3, you get b4 and the position is very suspicious. And if, even, I think, after, instead of bishop e8, I had this b4 move, uh, trading bishop b5, but maybe then bishop e2 holds the um, equality somehow. But, well, I mean, it was very, very, very suspicious for white, but I mean, okay, um, Sasha defended very well, I think. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you very, very much, and now you're going to have white in the second game, so what do you expect from this game? Well, it's another tough game for me, of course, and my opponent is playing really, uh, is playing uh, really well, so I, I don't know. It should be very interesting. Mm -hmm. And you? Yeah, I don't know. For me, the only good thing about today's game is that I feel like tomorrow I'm playing white again. At least I don't think I'm supposed to get worse positions that I got today. <laughs> uh, at least the starting position of tomorrow's game is definitely better than what I had today. <laughs> at least there are some counter chances and so on. Thank you very much. Good luck to you tomorrow. Thank you. So, first game of the final of Moscow Grand Prix is a draw, and as you heard yourself, Alexander Grishuk was not happy how the opening went, and he is hopeful that tomorrow, well, uh, it will be better than today. He said that it's absolutely impossible that it's going to be worse. <coughs> Well, we were not that pessimistic about his position, but I believe he is the one that should be happy with the draw, even though he had the white pieces. So tomorrow, to remind you, it will be a second game of the final. If second game goes, uh, well, will be finished in a draw as well, then it will go to a tie break, which will be the day after tomorrow. And in this tie break, we will know the game, uh, know the name of the winner. So, I believe it will be it will be it for today. Thanks for watching us. Thanks for following us. Please make sure to come back tomorrow at 3 p.m. Moscow time, local time here, for the second game of the final. <laughs>